Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Madison Camp Randall Stadium and our Division 7 Championship Game audio-only coverage here on Zaleski Sports. I'm Tom King. Mike Wendlet is here with me. He'll be joining us a bit later here on the Fleet Farm uh, pregame show as we get set for this Division 7 title clash between the Edgar Wildcats and... Blackhawk Warren, and uh, both of these teams have played each other in the championship game before. In fact, Blackhawk beating Edgar a couple of times in 2018 and 2019. But this is Edgar's 14th trip to the state championship. That's a school record. That's a, uh, a record in the state for any school. Most uh, trips to Madison 14 times for Edgar head coach Jerry Sins coming into this one. Edgar has won seven titles before, one in Division Seven back in 2016, two in Division Six, 2009, and 2010 back-to-back years and three championships in division five in 1992 1999 and 2001 blackhawk warren a three-time champion coming out of the six rivers conference they were conference champions this year actually co-champions with potosi cassville their only loss of the season was to potosi cassville and they avenged that by beating them in the playoffs in order to get here to madison edgar comes in with a record of 12 and 1 as well this is the first of four games today here at Camp Randall. This Division 7 title game first up. Then it'll be Stratford as they go for another Division 6 championship. 12-1 Stratford Tigers facing Darlington, also 12-1. Division 5 later this afternoon, Wrightstown and La Crosse Aquinas. And in Division 4, it's Luxembourg Casco taking on an undefeated Lodi squad. Three games on the schedule tomorrow in Division 3, it's Rice Lake Grafton. Division 2, Wanakee against Badger. And Division 1 tomorrow afternoon, Milwaukee Marquette will face Franklin for the D1 championship. We'll dig into both of these teams, uh, and we expect a lot of rushing here in this Division 7 championship game. Neither team throws the ball very much, although Edgar throws it a little bit more than Blackhawk Warren does, but uh, we'll see if that transpires here today. Right now, though, we're going to catch up with uh, Edgar head coach Jerry Sins. Our Jason Zaleski sat down with the coach yesterday, and here's what they talked about. Welcome to our Fleet Farm pregame show. Fleet Farm, it is Orange Friday tomorrow. Get to Fleet Farm early for all the best deals and the best selection. Now you're here with Edgar Wildcats head coach Jerry Sins to preview our Division 7 state championship game, Edgar and Blackhawk Warren, um, 14th time. And, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of other teams, a lot of schools, coach, uh, don't, don't ever get to state. Um, how, do you, how do you keep these uh, precious and special over the years? Well, it's always fun because it's always different. There's always different parents. There's always different players. Um, like we were saying before, a lot of times, you know, a guy's dad played back in the 80s or the 90s, and, and now his son is playing. So, you know, those kinds of things make it kind of special and kind of nice. Um, we always have new coaches. So, you know, we got a couple of coaches now in the staff. Again, two or three new guys that, that have never uh, – this is their first one down here, and uh, and of course they've never won one. So that that's always part of it too, you know. That okay, we got to see if we can get in, get one for the new coach kind of a thing, you know. But <laughs> yeah, uh, I mentioned uh, Blackhawk Warren. Of course, now a, a couple of times ago to state they were just Blackhawk, and now they co-op with the uh, Illinois team. Um, they've kind of had your number. Uh, tell us about the history with Blackhawk over the years. Yeah, in, in two thousand. 16, we ended up playing Shellsburg, who was in their conference. Um, then in 2017, we kind of we had a really really good team. We shut out 10 of the first 11 teams we played. We get we get, I thought kind of upset by Bangor in a blizzard. Um, we had several things that just went the wrong way. Fumbled into the end zone when we had an eight nothing lead. It would have made it you know 15 or 16 to nothing, and it was a touchback to the 20 and. Then there was a muff punt situation that occurred in the fourth quarter deep that allowed them to score and things like this. And then they came to state and beat Blackhawk that year in a state championship game. That was the first time I was really kind of like aware of Blackhawk. Well, then in 2018, all of a sudden, Blackhawk's back again, mm -hmm. and we're back. And um, we were ahead 15-14 at halftime, um, did not play a good second half. That year, it was a cold year. We didn't get to practice outside for a couple weeks coming in. I thought our skills were just not good. I think we fumbled six times in that game and lost four or five of them. Mm -hmm. 
And um, they finally pushed a touchdown in in the fourth quarter and ended up beating us like 21 to 15 or whatever it was. Well, then in 2019, but I, I thought they kind of caught us by surprise a little, a little bit. You know, they, they were tougher, physically tougher than, you know, we really thought they might be. Um, 2019, I thought we were a little more well prepared physically and mentally to play them, even though we were playing a lot of sophomores and juniors. And, um, and that game ended up six to nothing. They they pulled one kind of trick play on us. Um, we thought our safety was going to intercept the thing, and the ball went just over. The quarterback rolled all the way to the right mm-hmm. sideline, threw 50 yards across the field, all the way back to mm-hmm. a back who snuck out of the backfield. Mm-hmm. And um, caught it just over the fingertips of our safety and ran down the sideline for a touchdown. We ended up scoring twice we thought that game but both of them were called back one for yes, the hole that's right. I remember what the other one was yep. and that game ended six to nothing so it was a hard fought game well then in 2020 we finally had all those guys as seniors you know, that had played at state at 18 and 19 as sophomores and juniors and then in 2020 we mm-hmm. don't have a <laughs> yeah all revved up to go with nowhere to go <laughs> yeah, no, no state championship game well then those guys all graduated but um neither one of us is, have been back to state since 2019 then 2021, there were two different teams. 2022, there were two different teams. So now, here both of us are back. So for both of us, it's the third time it stayed against the mm-hmm. same opponent, mm-hmm. which is pretty unusual. I uh, did very unusual for sure. We'll get back to Blackhawk Warren in just a minute. Uh, let's talk about your team a little bit. Um, ran into a, a pretty good Boysville team. The Bulldogs scored scored some points on you. That hadn't happened in a long time in the season. Not since week two had you been scored upon, but they scored a bunch. Um, and then a real physical battle uh, with, uh, with Banger last week that got you here. Uh, tell us about uh, your team. Um, have they reached their peak? And, and you know, just tell us about, about your, your team's kind of state in general right now coming into this championship game. Well, we're pretty healthy, um, which is good because that's always kind of a factor too after playing, you know, tough teams in the playoffs, end of the season, you know, Kobe, Auburndale, you know, which were good teams, you know, one-seeded teams in the playoffs mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. And, um, but we, but yeah, we ended up pretty healthy. We always try to save our guys all year for the end of the season. A guy like Carter, but he didn't carry much at all. Some of the games that we were winning pretty handily, he might only had five, six carries. Well, now he's carrying it 25 or 30 times, you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, but we, we kind of told him that, that that might be the way it is because it's, it's been that way for a long time. Um, the Boysville game was a shocker to everybody. I think the boys will, and to us. They'd only given up about 51 points all year, and yeah. somehow we put up 52 on them and yep. never, never punted at all. Yeah, yep. Um, of course, we had to try to keep scoring because they kept scoring. Um, so then we had to keep our offense <laughs> going too and not sub or anything like normally we would have we sub, but we, we couldn't afford to. Um, they hit us with some big plays, which once again, all four of their touchdowns are big plays, and. Mm-hmm. And I, we hadn't given up a big play all year. Had we shut out nine teams in a row coming into that game, so uh, we had to kind of reevaluate on defense. Made a few changes, and then I thought played a little better against Bangor. And uh, they, they got the uh, you know the field goal away in the end with a few seconds left to uh, to break the shutout. But um, but I thought we played pretty well against them. Bangor is very physical, just like I think Blackhawk Warren is going to be. Yeah. yeah. All right, um, kind of a fun thing in the in the Bangor game. A couple of your guys uh, late going in for a touchdown, high fiving down the sideline. Um, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I never noticed it, of course, till I watched the tape, and then we were watching the tape, and coaches, said, Do those guys high five each other. About the <laughs> I want to run it back. Yep. And, and so we watched again, and, and of course they they were just laughing at each other, and. Uh, we always have this thing we call a six-point block that, hey, if a guy's breaking away, um, you know, a six-point block, yeah, you, you get six points for the touchdown there. You really don't have to block anybody. You just run down in the end zone and celebrate with them, see? <laughs> and so that's what the six-point block is. <laughs> just sprint to the end zone. So, of course, that's what Kobe was doing. Uh-huh. And he realized he didn't have to block anybody. So, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you, buddy. <laughs> uh, you know, these are high school kids. And yeah. it, part of uh, playing, uh, being a student athlete, is having some fun and letting loose sometimes. And um, I thought they were thought they having fun with each other. And that's right. that's uh, good Good sportsmanship in that way. Um, all right, um, so tell us, you've had a week now to get ready for Blackhawk Warren. Uh, what do you know about that football club? 
they basically are very, very similar to what they were in 2018 and 2019, run pretty much the exact same plays. Defense has changed a little. Got some big linemen, just like they've always had. Their running backs aren't as big as they've been in the past. They're like 160, 170 pound guys. Um, they have three guys that have carried the ball. One guy 130 times, one guy 150 times, one guy 180 or 90 times. And um, one of them has 24 touchdowns. Another guy's got 16 touchdowns and, and so on. And, and But they run a pretty basic attack. Um, the thing they kind of beat us with each of those other two years is they just kept the ball away from us. Um, we just had done that in 2009 too, but our offense was so explosive then that we just scored every time we got it back anyway. Um, so that strategy didn't cost us, you know, when, when Regis used it against us in 2009, but, but it kind of did when, when Blackhawk kept the ball. I think we only ran six or seven plays in the whole second half in 2019. They got the ball, kept the ball for it. Eight, nine minutes. Didn't score, but kept it that long. We got it back. And I remember if we fumbled or if we just you know, three downs and out or whatever. And they basically kept it the rest of the game. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. so you, you can get the ball back. You only get like three, four offensive plays the whole half. Um, and I think that's kind of like part of their strategy to uh, keep their defense off the field as long as they can by allowing their offense to stay on the field. And so, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to have to uh, see if we can uh, change that script a little tomorrow. <laughs> Um, as we begin to uh, wrap up our, our Fleet, Fa Fleet Farm pregame show, again, Orange Friday tomorrow, get to Fleet Farm early for the best deals and the best selection. Uh, first quarter, Coach, uh, people watching the game uh, in person, at home, wherever they might be, regardless of what it says on the scoreboard, how will, how will people know that things are going according to plan in the first quarter? Well, I think, you know, we're, we're just playing relax, playing loose. Um, we, we showed the kids in 2016. Uh, game when we played Shellsbury. And you could tell right away in the first quarter that, of that game that our kids were just having fun. It was a day like tomorrow was going to be. It was 70 degrees. It was sunny. Thank goodness. It was, it was beautiful. <laughs> and we're just running around having fun. And of course, that game we were at 22 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. And and, um, and I think Shellsbury coming into that game had only allowed 50 or 51 points all season. Um, and we ended up with 36 at halftime in that game. And then there wasn't any scoring to speak of in the second half. Both teams played a lot of reserves. But um, I think that's the key. I think you got to play relaxed. You can't make the game bigger than it is. No, guys, it's a fun experience. Come down here, enjoy it, and, uh, and just do what you've been doing all year. So I, I hope we're not tight. Everything we did tonight was try to relax them and watched Remember the Titans on the way down on the bus because that's always a fun film to watch mm -hmm. with all the music mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. so on. Yeah. Coach Jerry sends in the Edgar Wildcats. Best of luck in the ballgame. Thank you very much. Yeah, you got it, Jerry. All right, kickoff coming up next on Zaleski Sports. Want to save even more at Fleet Farm? Well, now you can with Fleet Rewards. It's free to sign up and there's no credit card required. Using Fleet Rewards is easy. Earn points every time you shop. Plus, get exclusive member offers, birthday and anniversary perks, free tire rotations, and more. Download the Fleet Farm app or create an account at fleetfarm.com slash rewards to start earning points today. Fleet Farm, proudly serving the Midwest since 1955. And we're back here at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison getting set for this Division 7 championship game between the Edgar Wildcats and the Warriors of Blackhawk Warren. Edgar still warming up on the field below us. Blackhawk Warren, they were late getting out here, or at least they didn't come out to start warming up when Edgar did, and they're already off the field in the locker room discussing apparently what they're going to do early in this one. And we bring in Mike Wendland now, and let's start with Blackhawk Warren, a team that... Uh, that uh, I don't think a lot of people in our area are that familiar with. They're down in the southwestern part of the state. Uh, Black Hawk is a school district in Wisconsin near the border. Warren, a little town uh, just on the other side of the Wisconsin border in Illinois. They've been a co-op team for only a couple of years. But uh, Edgar, at least the coaching staff for Edgar, has seen them before here in Madison. Yeah, they have. And, and as, co as Coach Sins had said during, during our, our pregame show that, or the interview that Jason did with him yesterday, that... They, they, he knows their style. They're going to be very similar. They're going to be power run. They're going to try and out-physical you and play a ball control game, which 
they've done before. They, they again, they coaching coach has been there for for eight years now, so they they know what it takes to win. They know their system. If they run it well, that they're going to be hard to stop. And as they take the field, they just took the field right now, being led by their one of the players carrying their 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 flag. They know exactly what they want to be, and they know that if they play their game, they have a good chance. You know, when you talk about teams that have played before in these championship games, it maybe means more for the coaches and for the media and for the fans than it does for the players. Obviously, the players have never been here before. Uh, It'll be interesting to see, especially for the senior-laden Edgar squad, uh, that the moment is not too big for them. I don't think it is. Uh, those guys have, have they've played loose football all year. They they have fun playing as as they talked about on the pregame show, um, on the interview, and uh, they have just looked really good for the entire season. Yeah, they stumbled out of the gate in that first game against Ellsworth, a team that plays uh, in a bigger division. But uh, since that game, uh, they have just been spectacular. And as we mentioned, all of those shutouts in a row uh, in the middle of the season. Um, and I don't think this moment is too big for these Edgar players. No, I, I agree. With you. It's not even close to too big, especially because a lot of these guys had siblings or parents who played in, in games like this. So they, I'm sure they got they would ask him questions like, what's it like being on this field? What's it like being in a moment like this, playing on a Thursday morning? Like wh- all those little questions that are going to be asked, they have resources they can go to. They can talk to the coaching staff as well. So that they, I don't think the moment will be too big in the slightest for this team, especially, again, they had that shutout streak in one of the toughest conferences in the state, bar none, in the Merrillwood, in the final year of the Merrillwood, for that matter, as well. So, I mean, this is the final Merrillwood football game until they, in the, unless they bring the conference back in future years. And when you talk about how Edgar got here in the playoffs, they beat some really good teams, and they did it handily. I mean, they beat Glenwood City 36 nothing to begin their playoff run. Then they got the revenge over Regis. Regis, a team that blasted them in the playoffs last year, they, they beat Regis 20 to nothing in level two of the playoffs. Then they took on that Boyceville team, and as Coach Sins talked about, it was a shocker for everyone. Uh, two really good defensive teams, and it turned out to be a, an offensive game. 52-26, the final there and then last week uh, knocking off Bangor and Bangor didn't score until a late field goal 21-3 so Edgar has uh, not slowed down here in the playoffs uh, from what they did in the regular season no n- not in the slightest and you look at it going back to that Boyceville game a shootout game but it was also one of the most legendary performances in school history by, by Carter Butt in that game and so they know that they have someone they can rely on if they need that monster game and we were joking around a little bit looking at the, the all time record see if maybe he has a chance to go for that which was like 341 is I think the state record for rushing yards in a in a championship game and that's, that was a division one game that was 49-42 so I, I mean I don't think it'll be that high scoring if it is I will be I will eat this microphone if it is <laughs> like that. Well, you, you talk about Carter Budd, and obviously he has a chance to break a long one from any spot on the field. Uh, just the incredible uh, power of hitting the hole and then breaking uh, tackles early in the contact and then outrunning people, outrunning defensive backs uh, later in the runs. I mean, he's just a total package. When you talk about Carter Budd, he set the all-time rushing record for Edgar High School in a game earlier this year. This season, 1,773 yards coming in. He's averaging over 7 yards per carry, averaging over 136 yards per game, and he's got 31 touchdowns. Now, as Coach Sins talked about, they they rested him, you know, in quotation marks late in the season and didn't give him as, ma- as many carries as uh, he normally would get but uh, in the last couple of playoff games they've been riding Carter Butt and I would imagine they'll do that again here today. Absolutely and we're going to see him right away because they just finished the coin toss Blackhawk won the toss, they deferred and so Edgar will get the ball going left to right to start this, to start this state, to start the state, state championship week but the other thing is that this Edgar offense, if the other team wants to key on Carter Butt, they've got other weapons. I mean, Colby Weisenberger has been a great uh, extra running back for them and re- really a compliment to what Carter Butt can do. He's having a great year. You've got Jace Affelbeck, who scored a touchdown last week. He's their third running back option. And when they get inside the red zone, they run that full house backfield. All three of those guys are there. You don't know who's going to get the ball. Usually it's Butt, but if the team keys on him, then they can go to Weisenberger or Affelbeck. And you've got Tegan Strite, who can roll out, run a little bit, and you've got a couple of pass catching options if, in fact, they do want to go to the air. They don't do it often, but they've got tight end Brett Baumgartner and uh, Leighton Schuett at the uh, wide receiver position, and they'll take a shot with him every once in a while as well. And even so, you can also go to Carter Butt as well. They can send him on a wheel route, send him out, out on, a, on going backside. There's a lot of things they can do. And the thing that strikes me the most watching the tape and watching our past broadcasts of the Wildcats this year is both Butt and, and, uh, we- and Weisenberger, they run with exceptional balance. 
for guys as big as they are and, and as and as stockly as they're built, they like you said, they run through those arm tackles like it's like it's nothing. And they are exceptional at at just falling forward and keeping their feet going at every single time. And and that's going to be a key on this field because, we, we, again, we were talking before we went live that this field's already kind of chewed up for, for a turf field. There, there's a lot of, of cleat marks already on it. And and a fairly warm day, it's going to be key to be able to keep your footing, keep your balance on, on, a, on a surface like this where you don't play on it that often. Yeah, I think it's kind of surprising. I know that the Badgers are near the end of their season here, just a couple of games remaining, but especially between the 20 and 40-yard line on the uh, north side of the field, it, it, it is kind of chewed up. And I, yeah, we'll see what happens with footwork when it, and uh, footing when it comes to that. Out, Edgar outscoring opponents 464 to 47 this year, and as we mentioned, a lot of those uh, consecutive shutouts as we went through the season. Now, if you look at Blackhawk Warren, they're going to be almost a mirror of uh, of Edgar in, in, as far as running the football. They've got a couple of guys who have put together huge rushing seasons, led by Lane Marty. He's a senior, 1,549 yards on the ground, averaging 8 yards a carry, 119 yards a game, and he's got 23 touchdowns. And if they don't give it to him, they've got a junior running back, Owen Sefrud, with 1,366 yards, 8.5 yards per carry, 105 yards a game, and 16 touchdowns. So they're going to pound it at you as well. And uh, the Edgar your defense has been pretty good up front, and then they've got Carter Butt, who was an All-State player at linebacker. In fact, Carter Butt was named All-State at both running back and linebacker, uh, along with other All-State, the other All-State player for uh, Edgar Harrison Gravine at offensive line by uh, the Wisconsin Sports Network, and honorable mention uh, Preston Dalkey in that defensive line and Tegan Stride at defensive back. So we talk a lot about the Edgar offense, but <laughs> that defense has been spectacular this season. You, you can't get nine straight shutouts without it being spectacular, especially in the conference playing Colby and Auburndale, uh, playing Stratford earlier. Uh, Pittsville was had a really good start to the year. Like the Abbotsford, like those teams can score, and the fact that you can shut them down and running clock almost all of them is a testament to how talented this defense is, and especially how good that front seven is. They are very hard to run against, and that's going to be the first two games these two teams played at state were both low scoring. The one was six nothing. I'd be surprised if if it's not another low-scoring, hard-hitting defensive type game. And another guy you, you didn't talk about with Blackhawk Warren is their third leading rusher, which is their quarterback Eli Schleem, who's got who's just shy of 800 yards of his own. He, like they they have a three-headed attack, and again they can. You, you have to try and find out who's got the football at any given time. I'll tell you what, let's take a break. We'll come back and talk more about this upcoming Division Seven championship game and audio only here on Zaleski Sports. We'll be right back. Edgar Grind, welcome all to our spot. We are open seven days a week until 10 p.m. Whether you're celebrating, looking for free Wi-Fi, relaxing, or trying to warm up, we have a little something for everyone. We offer local fresh coffee drinks, smoothies, ice cream, snacks, and food. We strive for affordable and healthy options for everyone and can't wait to see you. Whether you're just beginning your educational journey or seeking a new opportunity, we're here for you. At North Central Technical College, we have unique partnerships with four-year colleges that allow you to transfer seamlessly to and from our campus, saving you time and money. With hundreds of transfer options available, the path to a bachelor's degree and a great paying career are just a step away. North Central Technical College. Start here. Go anywhere. Cropping Central, conveniently located between Edgar and Stratford on County Road M, 715-352-2843. Let Cropping Central take care of your field plans, yield mapping, crop scouting, and crop protection, including hail insurance. Cropping Central, 715-352-2843, and visit them on County Road M, west of Edgar. I think there are a lot of benefits to schooling our children from home. We get to spend a lot of time with them and there are eureka moments like seeing them walk for the first time or they figure something out and they're so excited about it. The RVA really does work with each family to individualize each child's education to help them really succeed. This is like the best thing in Wisconsin in terms of school. For us, the RVA was our first and best choice of schools to choose. We love the RVA! 
here on the Fleet Farm pregame show. Toyland now open at Fleet Farm with their price match plus guarantee. If you find a lower toy price, they'll beat it by 5%. You'll get the best price on a huge selection of toys at Fleet Farm. I'm Tom King along with Mike Wendland. We're at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison getting set for Division 7 championship football action between the Edgar Wildcats and the Warriors of Blackhawk Warren. We heard Coach Sins in that pregame interview talking about the last time or one of the last times these two teams played here, and it was a lot of fumbles for the Edgar Wildcats. That may be the difference tonight is uh, who creates turnovers and who can uh, take advantage of it and put some points on the board. Yeah, games like these where you have two similar teams, two very physical teams, and it'll come down to turnovers, penalties, a punting. It's a lot of little things that people maybe ignore a little bit. I remember that game uh, the, with all those fumbles. It was a windy day. It was a really cold day, and you could tell both teams were really struggling with hanging on to the football. There was multiple muff punts. It was like a stretch of like four straight plays with a fumble. It was one of those games where both teams were both kind of glad it was over because they knew they were both just kind of numb and kind of fighting through it. Well, we won't have that problem today. The weather's going to be great. Could be uh, record it, highs. Yeah, very warm, uh, filtered sunshine. We've got some clouds, so that'll be good as well. But uh, And it is a bit breezy. The wind blowing, it looks like, toward the north, maybe the northwest yeah, it's, here. It's, it's been swirling a little bit. And as far as the, the kicking game goes, of course, Edgar with a pretty good kicking game. Harrison Gravine uh, on extra points when they, when they do kick it. And then uh, they can kick field goals. They didn't go for field goals early last week. They had a couple of chances early in that game, two possessions inside the 20-yard line. In fact, one inside the five-yard line, and they decided to go for it on fourth down on both of those plays instead of kicking field goals, and uh, they didn't get it either time. We were just talking about that during the break, that last week's Edgar matchup with uh, Bangor was scoreless at halftime. Obviously, Edgar is getting the ball first here, as you said, and they'd like to put some points on the board early because, let's face it, in a game like this, the team that scores first is going to be feeling pretty good about themselves. Yeah, well, well, and people over the years have started to ignore well, Momentum is a very real thing, especially on the football field. If you can get the momentum on the first drive, you can drive down, score right away, you're going to be playing more confident, more relaxed in front, in front of, this, in front of this, this stadium like this. And you talk about you know the Edgar coaching staff, Jerry Sins, 49th year. Obviously, I, I would think he'd come back for a 50th year next year. He hasn't talked about that at all. Obviously, you don't want to talk about that during the season. But you know that these seniors, and let's face it, a lot of the skilled players for Edgar playing their final football game here today, uh, want to go out on top and, and uh, give Jerry Sins another championship in his 49th year at the helm. Yeah, so we get number eight in that trophy case, and pretty soon they're going to have to start expanding it. They're, they're, they're going to be running out of room fairly quickly with other sports that have been making runs as well, but obviously that with 13 gold or silver balls already in there, number 14 is going to look pretty good for the Wildcats. When we look at that, that senior-laden roster for Edgar, the team, the guys that are playing both sides of the football, especially when you talk about guys like Carter Butt, Colby Weisenberger, Tegan Streit, you talk about some of those linemen up front in Corey Schilling and, and uh, Preston Dahlke, you've got... Uh, Marcus Hainerfus and Kale Higgins. You've got Brett Baumgarter at tight end. You've got the All Conference uh, offensive lineman, or the uh, state All State off, uh, offensive lineman in Harrison Gravine. You're talking about Mason Thornton and Austin Jacobs and some of those other seniors. I mean, Edgar's going to have some spots to fill next season. Now they do have some talented guys coming back who will get the football today. And you talk about a Jace Affelbeck and uh, uh, Leighton Shewitt. Uh, if they do go to the air, it'll probably be to Shewitt. And then they've got a couple of the youngsters starting in the defensive backfield. And I think that was a question mark early in the season. And in fact, the first time I talked to Coach Sins early in the year, he said, well, we've got some sophomores playing in that defensive backfield in Maverick Butt and Tucker Strite. And uh, there was some question about, you know, how they would react to that varsity uh, time early in the season and they came through with flying colors they played very well back there and, so, and again both only sophomores they're only going to be growing they're only going to be getting taller uh, faster stronger and a program like Edgar that seems to churn out players they who live in the weight room who live in the gym they're going to be ready to go and, and you, there's never going to be a bad Edgar team they're as I, I can almost vouch my life on it. There will never be a mediocre to bad Edgar. Yeah, it's it's hard to fathom that. Uh, but you, you have a lot of this family, these family ties too, uh, brothers and cousins, and all of these guys that uh, have played. As Carter Butt usually puts it after the game, all of these guys have played football since you know flag football when they were in kindergarten, and uh, you can say a lot about chemistry that way. Uh, Guys that, that know what their teammates are going to do without even thinking about it. They know where they're going to be. They know what they're going to do. And uh, that's a huge part of having a successful program. Absolutely. And they mean looking forward. How many of them probably played on over Thanksgivings in their backyards with, with their parents who were Edgar champions and, and grandparents and uncles and cousins? and just it's, Edgar is, is really a family, 
a family town, a family affair with this program for years and years and decades going back. All right, we're just about set uh, for the national anthem, and then they'll get the introduction of the teams, and we'll get set to go. This is, of course, the first of four games here today, and the first of two we'll be covering here on Zaleski Sports, audio only. The Stratford Tigers uh, will be in action in Division Six when we are done here. Stratford will be taking on Darlington, and uh, I know you're familiar with that Stratford team. Uh, that should be a pretty good matchup, a couple of really good teams there. Yeah, it's going to be quite the event. Stratford looking to go back to back. Of course, Edgar knows Stratford very well as well. So it's it. I'd be it's Stratford and another one of those programs. They'll never be bad. All right, we'll take a break and come back with more. You're listening to High School Championship Football on Zaleski Sports. Culligan Water delivers from your first call to your first sip to your first soak. Culligan, give us a tap. The only water that comes with a van. From humble beginnings in 1904, the Wietrich family has grown grassland dairy products into one of the largest processors of butter in the nation. Based in Greenwood, Wisconsin, the family and its hundreds of employees continue their pursuit of providing high quality products that can proudly be served in restaurants and homes across America. Warner Insurance Agency is a family owned insurance business that has been helping customers with all of their property and casualty insurance needs for three generations. Let Warner Insurance help with your small business farm, home, auto, and recreational vehicle insurance needs. Werner Insurance, proud supporter of the Edgar Wildcats. Why work for Staub Construction? Everybody around you is just family. Everybody seems to bond together and get along good, and they, I believe, truly care about their employees. Staub has a a great benefits package. Staub is an employee-owned company that uh, puts a, a large emphasis on work-life balance. And everybody wants to see everybody succeed. It's a good place to work. Join the team at Staub Construction. Apply now at StaubCO.com. Greg's Groot's Appliance is the place for all your home appliance needs. Let owners Greg and Tammy Kornack, along with their staff, provide you with quality appliances. Greg's Gruet's Appliance offers professional delivery, installation, and our own service department. Located in Merrill and proudly serving all of central Wisconsin. Greg's Gruet's Appliance. Service with Wildcat pride. And we're back here at Camp Randall Stadium. Blackhawk Warren was introduced as a team. Edgar having their starting defense introduced here uh, tonight and or this, I'm going to say tonight a lot. I know we're not used to a 10 o'clock in the the morning uh, game, but uh, some places it's tonight. Yeah, well that's true. Um, the defense for Edgar, as we talked about, had that string of shutouts, and a big part of that, I think, the defensive front that just played really good football uh, the entire season. I mean, there there wasn't a game really where they struggled. And when you talk about those guys, Austin Jacobs, Lucas Stonky, um, you've got Brett Baumgartner in there at one of those spots. And then the play of Preston Dawkey. He was named All-State Honorable Mention at the defensive line, and he is, is a name you're going to hear a lot today. He's in on a lot of tackles um, up front for the Wildcats. And... Uh, That'll be big when you're talking about taking on a team that runs the football. You've got to be stout up front, and, and the Wildcats have certainly been that. Yeah, you look at that front seven, that, that line and the, the linebacking core. Obviously, Austin Jacobs, and not many guys in D7 are going to block 6'3", 245. Or if, if Graveen gets in there at two, 260, like there, there's this, the strength and size of, of this defensive front is, is unmatched in Division Seven. And then those guys will hold their blocks at the linebackers, swarm in, make the tackle, and they don't miss tackles. That's the thing. They, when they get you wrapped up, you're going to the ground. And on the offensive side, the running backs, you know, get all the glory, but uh, they're the first ones when we interview them after the game in the house. They're the first ones to say it's the offensive line that uh, makes everything that they do possible. And the Edgar offensive line has really done the job opening holes for Butt and Weisenberger and Affelbeck this season. All right, we're just about set to begin. As you mentioned, Edgar's going to get the football first here. And uh, Blackhawk Warren set to kick off. 
We mentioned Blackhawk Warren with gray uniforms, black numbers. That uh, never a good uh, good idea. I don't know whoever comes up with the idea of dark numbers on dark uniforms, uh, but that is a that is a bad look, especially it, for the for, for us doing the game. If it was rev- especially as far up as we are, if it was reversed, it would look. I think we look really great. Though if it was black with gray numbers, because it's red, there's red outline on the numbers as well. It looks like set to kick is Bryce Van Ralty. No problem seeing the Edgar uniforms. They've got the white jerseys, green numerals, green pants, green helmets, and uh, we are just about set to go. A couple guys still wearing the long sleeves on a approaching 60-degree day. We've got Carter Butt back deep. Affelbeck's back there as well as, uh, I believe, let's see who that is. That Weisenberger is back there. So get your entire backfield back there. Get them, get them the ball right away. And I don't know what it's going to be like if they're going to maybe do a squib or it'll we'll, we'll be interesting to see if Actually, they keep it away from from uh, the, those three-headed monster back there. Actually, they don't have butt back deep on the kickoff this time around. They've got Affelbeck back there, Weisenberger, and they've got uh, Gavin, Gavin Maurer. Maurer. You know, there has to be, come a point where Carter Butt's got to take a breather once in a while. He plays like every play, but if you're going to run him 30 times a game, maybe take him off special teams. That's a pretty good idea, I think. Especially, yeah, I've seen you, you, in other divisions over years where you have a guy who plays everything. He plays kick, return, kickoff, punt, offense, defense, and he just burns out by the time you're in the 15th game, and eventually you just, you just, your legs just stop. And they, then you get to the third, fourth quarter, and you have nothing left. And obviously with Carter Butt, his last game as a Wildcat, you don't want that to happen on, on a special teams play. Both teams were ready to go, but there's been a delay, I would imagine. TV we, timeout. We, yeah, we can understand why. Uh, our uh, game day... Sponsors include the Edgar Grind, Warner Insurance, Cropping Central, Greg Gruitt Appliance, the Buccaneer Supper Club, and BAME Insurance, and we appreciate their support. Still waiting uh, word from the officials here to start this one. Yeah, we, you, yeah when, you, when we look down, we see someone in a red red pullover. That's when, when they're ready to go, they're going to bring cables, wind, wind the cable back out, and it looks like we're just about ready to go. All right. You know, these players are, are jacked up and ready to go. No question about that. Oh, yeah. They, they, I mean, they've been ready. They, got, they were out here and over almost 90 minutes ago. They're ready to go. And it's a very short approach for this kicker. So this, I, I'd be surprised if he kicks it deep with the, how short his approach is. Yeah, he's only standing about four yards behind the ball. He's in front of his, his, his line mates who are all in three-point stances. It is a squib kick. It's going to take a bounce. It's bobbled, and then the one of the upmen falls on the football. Ty Schnelli. Looks like he's at the 32-and-a-half-yard 30, line. So the Wildcats will get a nice field position to start on a very uh, odd kickoff. It wasn't an intentional um, onside kick, but it, it almost went sideways when it got about 10 yards down the field, and Schnelli had it bounce off him. He was able to fall on it and cover it up. And so the Wildcats will have it first and 10 on their own 32-yard line. Yeah, right on the left hash. and They're going to send Shewitt out wide to the right. Wing right as well. Oh, that's Weisenberger, looks like his wing. And now we've got another stoppage. They're going to throw, they're going to... Yeah, get a new football They're waiting in. for a new get a new football in. All right. Yeah, get the Edgar ball in there. Strite's going to operate out of the gun here on this opening play. He's got two backs back there with him. Tight end left for Baumgartner. And they're going to play action, and Strite's going to roll He's out. Got He's him. got some running room. He's got the corner. He's going across the 35, the 40, and then goes out of bounds at about the 44-yard line. It's going to be enough for a first down. 12-yard run for Tegan Strite on the design rollout. And that was one. If he had looked deep, he had Shewitt by about seven yards. Uh, Shewitt had leaked behind everybody. If, if Strite had looked up, he would have. It, might, it would have been a walk-in 68-yard touchdown. That's a, that's a play they've used this year. And they're going to run it again later this game, and you, you, can get, you can put your money on that. Strite will go under center this time. Weisenberger and Butt in the backfield. They're going to give it to Carter Butt straight ahead. Not much. Got it across the 45 to about the 46. Pickup of a couple for Carter Butt. Looks like Brady Steets in on the tackle. One of three Steets among their top four tacklers for Blackhawk Warren. And we were trying to determine if the two juniors are... Twins, twins or, or cousins, their cousins. Or, and and you, you made the point because one's three inches taller and thirty pounds heavier. They might be fraternal <laughs> twins, but second down and eight here for the Wildcats, right out of the gun again. 
Weisenberger goes in motion. And Streit's going to roll out left this time. He's looking to throw. Now he pulls it down. He's going to run with the football. Made one man miss. Got around the corner. And across midfield, he's going to be out enough for a first down, it looks like, down near the 44-yard line of Blackhawk Warren. Beautiful open field move by Tegan Streit. And also Weisenberger clearing out space. He did like a wheel turning into a chair route. And he had gotten behind, but at that point it was too late for, for Tegan to, to plan himself and make a throw. And so he did as much as he could. And he's having a very good drive to start things off here. They're already in plus territory. Two carries, 22 yards here for Tegan Strite on the opening drive. It's first and 10 Wildcats at the Blackhawk Warren 44-yard line. Shewitt comes in motion. They're going to pitch it this time and try the edge. And Weisenberger's going nowhere. He gets dropped in the backfield near midfield. I think that one was Drew Steets. Coming through making the tackle number 53. It almost looked like he came in unblocked. He met Weisenberger almost as soon as he took the handoff, and it's a loss of six all the way back to the 50-yard line. Yeah, whoever was looking to pull or chip just missed the block, and there, there was no chance for Weisenberger to even make a move. He got he, he got it, and there was a play, Steeds was already at his legs. Nicolay Bank, one of our great sponsors, offering personal banking at its best. They have locations in Stevens Point, Wausau, Colby, Medford, Edgar, and Merrill, or you can learn more at NicolayBank.com. Wide receiver left, man in motion, that's Maurer. Now he sets up as a wing to the left. They're going to give it to Chase Affelbeck, and he gets knocked down after a very short pickup. Got it down to about the 47-yard line of Blackhawk Warren. Yeah, so it'll be third and 13 on the way as Weisenberger got a little bit of a breather and looks like he'll head back in now for this third down. And you, a game like this, you can't be getting behind the chains. A couple great plays to start things off, but that loss of six... Is such a back-breaking type play in, in a game like this where there's going to be a lot of running. You have to be able to play ahead ahead of your of your sticks and, and make third downs much easier than what it's going to look like here. So let's see if they decide to go to the air here. They've got Weisenberger splitting out wide left. Schuett comes to the near side. Affelbeck and Butt in the backfield, straight under center. And now they almost drew Blackhawk Warren offside. And, and then, then now they just threw it. Yeah, it was a late flag. It's almost like they were used to college or NFL rules where if he gets back in time, you can, you can still not call it, but obviously in high school, if he gets in the neutral zone, they're gonna, you have to throw the flag every time. Edgar uh, picked up from the football. They must have heard a whistle. We can't hear the whistle very well here in an in enclosed booth, but uh, the flag came out very late. But it is an offside penalty against uh, Blackhawk Warren, and that makes it a little bit more manageable now. Third down and eight. Yeah, that's a, that's a huge gift for Edgar. Yeah, and we said you, uh, offense can't play behind the six. Defense, you can't be jumping offside in third and 13. Same formation, straight under center. Let's see if they go to the air here. They've got single coverage on Shewitt here to the near side. They're going to hand it off, though, to Carter Butt. He's going to try to get the edge, and he does. What a Inside great the 40, and he's going all the way. Carter Butt is going to go down the sideline and into the end zone. No flags, and Edgar's going to get on the board first here at 6 nothing. Colby Weisenberger wiped out three players on one block around the edge. That was a perfect seal. And Butt saw it and just bounced it outside and uh, takes it the distance. He could have backflipped into the end zone if he had wanted to. There was nobody within 20 yards of him after that incredible block. And, and, he's, and, and that was one, that's one where, like, last week when they were high-fiving, that was another, <laughs> uh, as Coach Sin says, a six-point block. Indeed, and it's a 44-yard touchdown run. For Carter Butt. His abs this absolutely perfect play call on third and long and set up by one of your senior leaders making a spe- making an all making a play that's gonna go down the highlights for a long time. And like they have all season when they score first, they will go for two points here. Full house backfield behind Strite. Officials gotta get make sure they're all on the same page as far as who's got what. So now Edgar's going to huddle up again here. The ball's marked at the three-yard line. It's not a penalty or anything. They were ready to go, and then there was a stoppage of play. And we talked about whoever scores first is going to feel good. They're going to, after that play, Wildcats are going to be feeling as high as the sun. Especially coming back from that loss that set them up on a long... There's a handoff to Weisenberger. He's trying to get the edge. He will, and it'll be a two-point conversion. The speed of Colby Weisenberger right there, busting it outside and beating one of the Blackhawk Warren players to the edge. Colby Weisenberger with the two-point conversion, and Edgar leads it here 8-0. Back in a moment, you're listening to High School Championship Football on Zaleski Sports. We take great pride in what we do. 
We offer high quality natural stone granite as well as a huge selection of man-made stone. With full slabs as well as a variety of partial remnants, you'll have no problem finding the stone that was meant for you. Our high-end, high-quality granite, quartz, and marble is perfect for any kitchen, bathroom, or remodel need. We are locally owned and operated on County Road C near Stratford. We service all of Wisconsin. Fleet Farm has everything you need for every season of life. From tending the vegetable garden season to planting 100 acres of crop season. Fleet Farm is your one-stop shop. Whether it's strawberry jam season, cook your walleye season, or his first set of wheels season. Fleet Farm is built for every season. Fleet Farm, built for real life. And we're back here at Camp Randall Stadium. Tom King, Mike Wenland here on Zaleski Sports. The Edgar Wildcats jump out on top. Officially a 42-yard touchdown run for Carter Butt, his 32nd touchdown of the season. Colby Weisenberger adds the two-point conversion, and it is eight to nothing. Yeah, that, that's a play where I cannot wait to watch highlights later on. The uh, Trevor was right there. Trevor Zaleski uh, shooting the highlights for this one. He got he's gonna have a great look of it. I, just to watch that block. Just we totally talked about during every time we get him in the house. They talk about their line. Weisenberger, again, that's a play that he's going to have on his computer, on his phone for the rest of his life. <laughs> well, and to see Carter Butt see that, I mean, Carter, he was going to cut that back inside. And I think when he saw that Weisenberger had the edge sealed, uh, he bounced it outside, and then there was nobody to touch him for the 42-yard run to the end zone. Yeah, they, uh, Blackhawk Warren had crashed their corners completely in. And when Weisenberger was able to just turn his body to back into the field, and he, he blocked a, a, a warrior with another player. He, he threw one into those. like watching the old plays with Reggie White where he sacked Warren Moon with Chris Carter. It was, he, it was like that type of play. <laughs> All right. We are uh, waiting at the kickoff. Both teams still huddling up on the sideline as uh, there will be extended breaks here for the WIA TV broadcast. Our game is brought to you in part by Culligan Water. Get Culligan Water for only $9.95 a month for the first three months. Visit Sterling Culligan Water at CulliganH2O.com. And also by Fleet Farm. Toyland now open at Fleet Farm with their price match plus guarantee. If you find a lower price on a toy, they'll beat it by 5%. You'll get the best price on a huge selection of toys at Fleet Farm. Especially now holiday season around, it's, it's a perfect time to go do it. If you got some, if you got young ones at home, go to Toyland. It's it's. You're going to find everything you need do they, there. Do they have any uh, Edgar bobbleheads at Toyland yet? Do we have the Carter yeah. Butt bobbleheads yeah, yet? To, those might need to be custom order, but I'm sure they could probably make <laughs> one for you. No NIL. Uh, no NIL. There won't be a name on the jersey. It'll All just right, be okay. a number 21. All right. Harrison Gravine set to kick off here for the Wildcats. Old school, straight on approach. Mm -hmm. It's a line drive. It's going to be fielded at about the 14-yard line across the 20-25 and out across the 30 so the Warriors get a nice return, and bringing it out for Blackhawk Warren was Owen Sefrud, who's one of their top running backs as well. I thought that play was going to be blocked a little better than it was. Looked like he had to see him right away, but no. But whoever was there just didn't block Brock Bauer. He, he had him lined up and just didn't touch him. So the first possession of the game here for the Blackhawk Warren Warriors. As we mentioned, two big running backs in Lane Marty and uh, Owen Sefrud. And... Looks like it is uh, like a double, almost a double wing. The quarterback, Schleem, under center. He dropped. He falls on the ground. He picks it up, though, and, and he's going to be nailed. Call it no gain. He maybe got the line of scrimmage. Baumgartner in there on the stop. Weisenberger as well. Very lucky to get that one back. He snapped one right into his hands. He just dropped it. Second down and 10. Actually, it looks like they gave him a yard on that. Yeah, he kind of fell forward for about half a yard or so. Not much, but... Ball's marked at about the 33-yard line. The turnover there would have been a massive, massive back-breaking play after you just gave up a touchdown on third and eight. They're taking a long time. The quarterback didn't come to the sideline to get the play right away. Now he did, and now he runs back out. They're going to have to hurry to get this play off. They hurry to the line, and they're going to have to take a timeout. Yep, right they're going to have to take a timeout, and we'll take one as well. Timeout, Blackhawk Warren, back in a moment. You're listening to... High School Championship Football on Zaleski Sports. 
Brooks Learning Garden with two convenient central Wisconsin locations. Here's Brooks Severs to tell us about it. Little Sprouts has been around for almost seven years here in Auburndale. In Rudolph, we've been open for about two and a half. We serve here in Auburndale. We have six weeks old up until 12 year olds. And then in Rudolph, we have one year olds up until 12 year olds. The biggest thing that we do with them is we have play-based learning so that they um, learn through play with each other. And social skills are a huge part of what we do with them. Find Little Sprouts Learning Garden on Facebook today. From humble beginnings in 1904, the Wietrich family has grown grassland dairy products into one of the largest processors of butter in the nation. Based in Greenwood, Wisconsin, the family and its hundreds of employees continue their pursuit of providing high quality products that can proudly be served in restaurants and homes across America. And we're back here at Camp Randall Stadium. Blackhawk Warren comes out in their first play of the game is a run to the right, and they pick up the second play of the game. They picked up close to first down yardage. Going to be a pickup of about eight on that. Going to be third down and one. Yeah, the running back broke a tackle. Tegan Schreit tried to make the big hit, and he kind of bounced off of him. That was Sefrud on the carry. So third down and about a yard here for the Warriors as they come to the line. They've got wide receivers in the formation. Oh, but and now tight we're going to get a movement. Or tight end on the right. Edgar was showing blitz. Affleck looked like he was going to come, and uh, they got movement on the right side. So instead of third and very short, it's going to be third down and about six. That was a play where the running back who had motioned out, he had tapped his quarterback saying, hey, ready, ready for snap. I'm behind you. And then for some reason, he didn't snap, and the tight end was, I think, expecting the count for that to go, and just miscommunication, and back five yards they go. So third down and six for the Warriors from their own 36. Offset Over backfield. Overload left. And they're going to run the option. They pitch it out, and they're not going to get there. Great play by Maverick, but... To, to seal it off, and then Baumgartner comes in and cleans it up. Yeah. Baumgartner, Carter Butt in there on the stop, and Maverick Butt over there as well, and it's going to be fourth down in a punting situation here for the Warriors. Edgar's going to get the ball back. Every time you run the option, you have to get that seal on the corner. Or he's going to blow that play up every time, and they did not get nearly good enough a block on Maverick Butt, who just jumped in and was able to get enough of them to let his linebackers come in and clean it up. Tegan Strike, Carter Butt will drop back to receive this punt. Snap is good. Punts away. It's a short one, and it's going to take a bounce just across midfield. Takes a Edgar bounce, and it's going to be down at about the 45-yard line. So the Wildcats with great field so, position here to start this second possession of the game. That's about a 19-yard punt. It was, looks like we're going to have a media timeout coming up. We're going to get a timeout on the field, so we'll take one as well. It's 8 nothing, Edgar. Back in a moment, you're listening to Championship Football on Zaleski Sports. Winter's coming fast, which means it's time to hit the trails. Bill Service Center has all things you need to stay warm and dry on the trails this winter. With a full selection of jackets, bibs, helmets, boots, casual wear. And don't forget that Bill's is your chainsaw safety gear headquarters. Bill Service Center is your one-stop connection for all your cold weather riding gear. Don't freeze your jingle bells off. Get your cold weather riding gear at Bill's Service Center. Bill's Service Center, where the adventure begins. Who are we? We are a locally owned and operated business serving our community for over 60 years. We have expanded to three locations with over 1 million square feet of combined production space. We have an elite workforce of over 400 employees. We have built stadiums for the Vegas Raiders, Indianapolis Colts, Atlanta Falcons, Chicago Bears, Minnesota Vikings, and more. Who are we? There's only one answer. I know that I can handle schooling my children because the RVA provides the tools that I need. The RVA has adjusted curriculum by placing children right where their learning is. That's the number one goal, is to make sure that your children are learning. And so you don't move on if, they're, if they haven't grasped the concept. You stop, pause, and you make sure that you grasp that before you move on. The RVA will work with your child's needs and will provide the support and the attention that your child not only needs but deserves. 
And we're back here at Camp Randall. Our game also brought to you in part by BAME Insurance. BAME Insurance of Edgar, founded in 1938. They're an agency, a third-generation, family-run, independent insurance agency. Get the personalized customer service you deserve at BAME Insurance of Edgar. BAME Insurance in downtown Edgar. Their number is 715-352-217. As we're still waiting to get the cord wrapped up to walk it in, but it looks like we're pretty soon to be coming back. But going into this drive now, Edgar, great field position after a 19-yard punt. A touchdown here with old, with still seven minutes left in the first quarter. Well, you I, got you got to love the way Edgar ran their offense the first uh, possession, except for that one running play that was a loss. They, they were pretty good. And so much was set up. Weisenberger in motion. They're going to give it to Butt. Big hole again. Now he cuts it back, and now he's off to the races. He's got one man to beat. He's going to be dragged down at about the 34-yard line. But Carter Butt once again finding a huge hole and then making a great cutback and picking up big yardage. Whereas on the touchdown, he cut outside. That time he cuts back into the hash and got a great seal by, I think it was, uh, the I think it was Bumgarner out there on that tight end who just walled this guy off. And you give Carter Butt a head of steam, and good luck. Well, he's just, he, his vision is so good. He sees those holes, and the first hole was big. The second cut, though, is what picked up another six, seven, eight yards. Weisenberger in motion again. They give it to Butt, try the left side. He's got blockers in front of him. He gets down inside the 30 to about the 27 for another pickup of about five or six yards on that. And we talked in pregame about how he just fought his, his ability to keep his balance, fall forward. You will never see him driven backwards and fall backwards. He was always going to be leaning forward, always getting that extra yard or two every time he touches the ball. Four carries for 72 yards now for Carter Butt. Back there with Affelbeck. Weisenberger comes in motion. They want to throw this time. They get it to shoe it, but he's going to be knocked down immediately. Good defensive play at about the 25-yard line. Going to be short of the first down by a couple of yards. Like Pearson Mahoney in on the tackle from his cornerback spot. So he'll be third and about a yard and a half. You go back to that game last week against Bangor. Bangor was giving the Edgar wide receivers about eight, nine yards played off them, and so they were able to throw that pass whenever they wanted to and pick up positive yardage. That time, good defense came up and stopped Shewitt after a very short pickup. It's going to be third down and about a yard here for the Wildcats. And now you, you bring Weisenberger and Butt in the backfield. Strike. And they give it to Butt. He's hit, but he's going to get the first down. Falls forward near the 22-yard line, and that'll be enough for the first down for Edgar. Really good block by Ty Schnelly. Just driving forward, driving his guy off enough to create the hole for Butt to fall forward. They're going to mark him at the 22, just shy of the 22, but that's enough for a first down. Sun coming out here at Camp Randall today. Just a beautiful fall day. We've got four games today, three tomorrow, and then... The Badgers are here, a night game against Nebraska on Saturday night. I saw some of the big TV trucks pulling in early this morning, getting set uh, set up for that already. They're already working up on the catwalk above where yep. all the numbers, the retired numbers and names are. They're going to give it to Carter Butt, cuts it back, breaks a tackle down inside the 20 to about the 18. Pickup of maybe four or five on that. Looks like they're going to mark him for a three. Mark him right at the 19. He did a good job. He cut back. He was able to break a tackle at the line of scrimmage. And Blackhawks been getting decent upfield penetration from their D line, but they just haven't been able to make that first tackle yet. Well, they've been really concentrating. Edgar has on the left side of that offensive line. They've run almost exclusively to that side of the field here in the early going. No, wouldn't doubt. Run behind number seventy-four. Indeed, Gravine is. I mean, he's all state old lineman for a reason. Affelbeck and Butt in the backfield. They give it uh, play action to Affelbeck this time. Strait is going to pull it down. He's going to run with the football, gets it outside the numbers, and then gets knocked down, but not until he gets first down yardage near the 10. They ran that play in the first drive, and Weisberger had gotten free this time. They didn't let him, and they, they tried. They just kept the coverage, and a good heads-up play. And Tegan, Tegan Strait is down. Tegan Strait is still down. He took a big hit at the end of that play on his hip. And uh, the coaches are out there talking to Tegan Strite, who's still on his back near the 10-yard line. Backup quarterback for the Wildcats is Tegan Strite's younger brother, Tucker. And it looks like Tucker's going to have to come into the game here. They're pointing to the sideline to get him ready to come into the game. Yep, and out comes the training staff right now. Because official immediately waved the play down. 
So while they uh, attend to Tegan Stride, we'll take a quick break here and come back. 4-13 to play here in the first quarter, and Edgar leading 8 nothing. We'll be back after this. You're listening to Championship Football on Zaleski Sports. Michelet Bank, we believe that our hometown communities are the backbone of what makes Wisconsin special. From Crivets to Manitowoc and Algoma to Grand Chute, you see a thriving community with Nicolay Bank working as a partner, acting not as a corporation, but a community. When we serve together with local entrepreneurs and leaders, great things happen. That is our guiding principle. A strong and successful hometown means a strong and successful Wisconsin. We are proud to be a part of that. Nicolay Bank, real people, real conversations. And we're back here at Camp Randall. Tegan straight up and off the field under his own power. Looked like he was holding his lower back or left hip. Uh, he took a shot there at the end of that play. Uh, so now it'll be Tucker Strike, the sophomore, in at quarterback. Full house backfield, as Edgar does when they get inside the red zone. They're going to give it to Carter Butt. Left side now cuts it back. Falls down near the seven-yard line. And just, just falling forward. And Tegan coming right back in. He's good to go. Set out one play. Yeah, he looks like he's walking a little gingerly out there. I'm not sure we're going to see many rollouts from him, at least. Not yet. <laughs> not for a while. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. He was kind of like s swinging and stretching his back out a little bit, and like a hip flexor. He can take the snap and hand it off to this triple-headed rushing monster they've got there. Affelbeck, Butt, and Weisenberger. Ball at about the seven-yard line. They're going to hand it off to Butt. Big hole again. Gets it down inside the five before he's gang-tackled there at about the four. Going to be third down and goal from the four-yard line for the Wildcats. And part of what makes him so powerful as he is is he's able to read those blocks really well. Affleback with a really good seal, and he blocked the guy to the sideline, allowing that cutback lane to open up. Carter Butt, seven carries, 80 yards here in the early going of this game. We're yeah. still in the first quarter with three minutes left. It runs a 40, 42, and 22 already in the first quarter. And we were joking about maybe getting that 340. I'm not sure we were joking as much as I, I thought we were. Tegan's right under center. They give it to Butt again. Another big hole, and he's going to try to power. He's down there close. They're going to yep. give him the touchdown. I, I thought he got knocked down short, but the uh, officials say no. It's a touchdown for Carter Butt from the four-yard line, and Edgar has jumped on the board here again, and they lead it 14 to nothing, pending the conversion. And again, just falling forward every time he, he's, he's wrapped up. He And with that be ability, with, with him being... Oh, just under six feet tall. He's able to just reach the ball across. He didn't wrap up his arms. And that left arm, that left arm, and he, oh, oh he, good thing he got across the goal line because he had, he had lost the ball. He was able to get it back. But luckily he had broken the plane at that point already anyway. So 14 nothing, and this is where they will uh, kick the extra point or attempt it anyway. Harrison Gravine, the offensive lineman, has to change shoes, as we've talked about many times this season. Put his kicking shoe on them. Straight-ahead kicker. And that's I wonder how many straight-ahead kickers there are left in high school football. Not, in the state not of too many, I, I, but I love seeing it because it, it just brings me back to, obviously I'm a lot, I'm only 32, but watching old film of guys like Jerry Kramer, Lou Groza kicking that straight-ahead style, three steps and just, just power it through. They'd wear that special shoe that was cut off on the front uh, back in those days. Well, or Tom Dempsey, where he yeah, half a foot. Right. So he right. has an extra like four inches of, of, of rubber that he could... Drive one through it from 63-plus yards. Leighton Shue with the long snapper. Tegan Strike the holder. Harrison Gravine. Now they, mm. now they're going to get him offside, and now they'll probably go for two if they mark them closer to the goal line, or did somebody from Edgar move? It, it, it's got to be going back the other way. It is yep. going. Yeah, it's going to be uh, offside again on Blackhawk Warren. That changes Edgar's thinking, and they will go for two here now. And I guess it's always funny when you watch. You bring your, your all-state left tackle to kick. You bring in your right wide receiver to snap. That is kind of strange, a wide receiver to uh, be the long snapper, but yeah. So nine snapping to 74. <laughs> and, you know, with the quarterback as the holder, you think maybe they'd run, you know, fakes a couple of times in that, but they don't. They, they haven't this year anyway, uh, fake field goals or anything like that. <laughs> Full house backfield again behind Tegan Strite. They give it to Butt. They're going to try the left side again. Puts his head down. He's going to be knocked down short. Good defensive stand right there by the Warriors, and Carter Butt could not get it into the end zone, so the score will remain 14 nothing. We'll take a break and come back with more. You're listening to High School Championship Football on Zaleski Sports. Edgar Grind, welcome all to our spot. 
we are open seven days a week until 10 p.m. Whether you're celebrating, looking for free Wi-Fi, relaxing, or trying to warm up, we have a little something for everyone. We offer local fresh coffee drinks, smoothies, ice cream, snacks, and food. We strive for affordable and healthy options for everyone and can't wait to see you. Whether you're just beginning your educational journey or seeking a new opportunity, we're here for you. At North Central Technical College, we have unique partnerships with four-year colleges that allow you to transfer seamlessly to and from our campus, saving you time and money. With hundreds of transfer options available, the path to a bachelor's degree and a great paying career are just a step away. North Central Technical College. Start here, go anywhere. And we're back here on a beautiful Thursday morning at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison. I'm Tom King. Mike Winlet here as well. You know, Edgar traveled well, a big crowd across the way from us. Uh, did they call off school today in Edgar? Or did they just call off school for the rest of the week? Because let's face it, deer hunting starts on Saturday. I mean, I would imagine that uh, most of the people in Edgar go deer hunting as well. All right, so if you heard that, girls basketball on the schedule for tomorrow night. So maybe they do have to go to school tomorrow. They lead it here 14 0. Harrison Green will kick off. High end over end kick going to be taken at about the 9-yard line. Out across the 15, the 20. Now cutting it back with some running room and then a big hit. Knocks him down. Let's see who got in on that tackle. 24 Five. the Wildcats. Austin That's Schreiber. Austin Schreiber plays special teams for Edgar. Big tackle right there. They're going to mark the ball at about the 34-yard line, and that's where Blackhawk Warren will begin this possession. Yeah, it's a good, solid cutback lane there, and I thought for a second if Schreiber hadn't got there, he was going to have a lot more yards as he, he tries, tried to r r cut back to the far hash. They quickly come to the line. That was Sefrut as well on the return. Man in motion for a moment. Now they hand it off, try a quick hitter on the left side. Carter Butt's going to make the stop of the running back after a short gain. Yeah, Sefrut for three and a half. I think that was Lane Marty that time, number four on the carry. Yes, it was four, sorry. Yep. Picked up about, yeah, three and a half, four yards on that. Going to be second down and about six. You haven't seen, I think it was the first carry for Marty? Yeah, that was, and he was their leading running back this season. Actually, they've got, they've got him down for two carries now for four yards. Again, really hard to see from where we are with these numbers. Another quick hitter, barely got the handoff, and a powering ahead... Across the 40, that was that Seth, was Seth Rude Rude. that time. At that time, I could see the number 12. Going to be just shy of the first down. It's going to be third and about one. And honestly, what this reminds me, this reminds me of watching Regis's offense. Just quick, those quick power handoffs. They, they, no they, window dressing. They line up, though, a little bit different than Regis and Bangor. Bangor, they're, they're, I... I described their offensive set as a scrum, a rugby scrum, because everybody was in tight. They're a little bit more spread out here. Split backfield behind the quarterback, Schleem. Another quick hitter, and that's going nowhere. The quarterback actually, kept it. Actually, the quarterback kept it. It's a great fake, and they're going to get the first down. I thought they gave it to the man inside. He got stopped immediately, but the quarterback, Schleem, kept it and came around the end and uh, picked up the first down. He pulled that back really, really late. He, he saw that the, his running back was not going to make it. He quick made the, well, pulled it back. And another thing I'm noticing as well, their offensive line splits are mm, huge. There, there's going to be chances for Edgar to get into the backfield. It's going to be first down on the 48-yard line. Offset backfield. And this time they do hand it off inside and just powering ahead. Cross midfield into Edgar territory at about the 47-yard line. Yes, yeah, Sefford going through there, and then at the end, a big hit by Shewitt coming in as he's kind of wrapped up, not quite down. So Shewitt goes, I'm going to lay, lay, lay the body a little bit and, and get in, make sure he goes down to the ground. Offensive line moved the pile that time. Or they won the battle up front, and uh, they were able to pick up about five yards on that. Going to be second down and five. A long five. Now wing left. They're going to try and get the corner this time, and uh, they won't do it. Coming in, the Butt Brothers, Maverick and Carter, came in and made the stop uh, on the running back. And you, and you can see a little bit now with just watching him in space, Marty, uh, 
definitely their home run threat. A lot you can see just, just naturally you can see he's so much faster than Sefrud. Call that no gain on the play. It's gonna be third down and five. Obviously, four down territory at this point. And now they have movement. The uh, wing, the wing back, stepped forward, and that'll be an illegal procedure penalty against Blackhawk Warren. And once again, we talked about many times how penalties can kill drives in high school football, especially holding penalties. But even these these five yard uh, illegal procedure well, penalties, especially a clock was running, clock was hitting zero. You didn't even just don't move. They weren't going to run the play. It's just a very, a very senseless penalty there. And as we look up, the clock is down to zero. Are they going to say there's one more play here before the end of the quarter? I Because the quarter can't end on a penalty, so they're going to run another play here before they take the break. Doesn't look nope, like it. They're going to take the break. So the first quarter's in the books, and it's been all Edgar so far. They lead it by a score of 14 to nothing. You're listening to Division 7 Championship Football on Zaleski Sports. Shopping Central, conveniently located between Edgar and Stratford on County Road M, 715-352-2843. Let Cropping Central take care of your field plans, yield mapping, crop scouting, and crop protection, including hail insurance. Cropping Central, 715-352-2843, and visit them on County Road M, west of Edgar. I think there are a lot of benefits to schooling our children from home. We get to spend a lot of time with them and there are eureka moments like seeing them walk for the first time or they figure something out and they're so excited about it. The RVA really does work with each family to individualize each child's education to help them really succeed. This is like the best thing in Wisconsin in terms of school. For us, the RVA was our first and best choice of schools to choose. We love the RVA! From humble beginnings in 1904, the Wietrich family has grown grassland dairy products into one of the largest processors of butter in the nation. Based in Greenwood, Wisconsin, the family and its hundreds of employees continue their pursuit of providing high quality products that can proudly be served in restaurants and homes across America. Hey, we're back here at Camp Randall. Tom King, Mike Wenland, uh, first quarter in the books, and uh, it's been all Edgar so far. 118 total yards in the first quarter for the Wildcats, led with 115 on the ground. Carter Butt, nine carries, 87 yards, and Blackhawk Warren just one first down in that first quarter. Yeah, it's, it's 28 total yards, three carries, 18 yards for Seth Rude, three carries for four yards for Lane Marty. That's a great job by the Edgar defense to, to hold their leading rusher to 1.3 per carry. And really, two of those runs went for no gain. That's just a re really solid job with his speed. But but that power run with Sefru has been the only thing that the Blackhawk Warren has been able to even rely on at all. But but penalties have been one of the big stories. Carter Butt with two touchdown runs for the Wildcats. Touchdowns 32 and 33 on the season for the Edgar Sr. First one was 42 yards. Second one was four yards. Colby Weisenberger added a two-point conversion after the first score. Edgar failed on a two-point conversion the second time, and that's where the score stands, 14-0. And now it's going to be third down and 10 here for Blackhawk Warren, just shy of midfield. And they're going to throw the football. Being rushed, and they have to get rid of it. It's incomplete. And that was the uh, big rush there put on by Ty Schnelli and also Lucas Stonkey, which forced the quarterback, Schleem, to get rid of the football before he wanted to. It's incomplete. I think they wanted that, that it was a double out route. One went shallow, one went deep. He wanted the deep route, but really good coverage there by the corners as well to, to cover him. Then he just had to dump it short, and the pressure forced him. Even if he makes the play, there's no chance of him making that play. So another punt here for the Warriors and you know when you're a team that consistently has to run the football it's really hard to come back from double digit deficits and right now even though we're early in the second quarter you got to feel pretty good if you're the Wildcats and now Strike takes the punt and he's going to be tackled they were trying to set up that that reverse that they run on the punt and Strike was going to hand it off to Carter Butt but it was well covered by the Warriors that time and Strike's lucky he was able to catch that football yeah, it kind of it kind of sliced on him, and after a really poor punt in the first quarter, that was much much better by Blackhawk Warren. And that was against the wind, if you believe the flags. And he and he fingertip caught it, and there was no chance as Pearson Mahoney 
was able to cover him up and make the tackle right away. So the Wildcats will have the football first and 10 on their own 15. It's kind of uh, interesting that Tegan Strite was back there returning the punt considering he took that big hit earlier in the quarter and had to leave the game for one play. But he apparently is all right. Yeah, officially a 33-yard kick. Offset backfield behind Strite uh, straight this time. They're going to hand it off inside and... Positive yardage out near the 20-yard line. That was Weisenberger. Weisenberger on the carry. Picked up maybe four on that. It looks like they're going to give him four more cuts just in front of the 19. Call it second down and six. But once again, running to the left side of that Edgar offensive line where All-Stater Harrison Gravine is stationed. And it looks like Schnelli at left guard. And Fletcher Weiland at center. They go full house backfield here despite being deep in their own territory, something we don't see a lot of. They usually save that when they get into the red zone, and now they're going to take a timeout. Tegan Strike didn't like where the clock was and what, where they were getting set up there, so Edgar will take a timeout their first of the half, and we'll take one as well. 14 nothing Wildcats. Back in a moment, you're listening to High School Championship Football on Zaleski Sports. Culligan Water delivers. From your first call, to your first sip, to your first soak. Culligan, give us a tap. The only water that comes with a van. From humble beginnings in 1904, the Wietrich family has grown grassland dairy products into one of the largest processors of butter in the nation. Based in Greenwood, Wisconsin, the family and its hundreds of employees continue their pursuit of providing high quality products that can proudly be served in restaurants and homes across America. Warner Insurance Agency is a family owned insurance business that has been helping customers with all of their property and casualty insurance needs for three generations. Let Warner Insurance help with your small business, farm, home, auto, and recreational vehicle insurance needs. Warner Insurance. Proud supporter of the Edgar Wildcats. Why work for Staub Construction? Everybody around you is just family. Everybody seems to bond together and get along good. And they, I believe, truly care about their employees. Staub has a, a great benefits package. Staub is an employee-owned company that uh, puts a, a large emphasis on work-life balance. And everybody wants to see everybody succeed. It's a good place to work. Join the team at Staub Construction. Apply now at StaubCO.com. Greg's Groot's Appliance is the place for all your home appliance needs. Let owners Greg and Tammy Kornack, along with their staff, provide you with quality appliances. Greg's Gruet's Appliance offers professional delivery, installation, and our own service department. Located in Merrill and proudly serving all of central Wisconsin. Greg's Gruet's Appliance. Service with Wildcat Pro. And we're back here at Camp Randall Stadium, one of our great sponsors, the Buccaneer of Roselleville, ready to welcome you to their supper club life. The Buccaneer has nightly specials, including Fish Fry Friday and Prime Rib Saturday. Visit the Buccaneer and enjoy the area's best fresh salad bar, a large drink menu, and tasty desserts. Veterans and first responders qualify to get your discount at the Buccaneer in Roselleville. It's going to be second down and six for Edgar from their own 19-yard line. Lining up dead center of the field. And Dan Rossing, you know, after he made a good point, the sun is going to be a factor in the second quarter. And especially for Blackhawk, they're going to be going, staring right into well, it. Well, the receivers will be looking back into it as well. Shewitt split wide right. Offset backfield. They're going to try the counterplay this time to Weisenberger, but it was played well. The defensive front for Blackhawk Warren stayed home that time and dropped Colby Weisenberger at the 20-yard line. And Lane Marty came in at the end to, to clean it up. Coming from his defensive back spot and I'm guessing pick one of the Steets player one of the Steets family who who stacked it up that'll be a good guess every time right it's you had a three out of 11 chance <laughs> so it's third down and about five here for the Wildcats Let's see if they decide to go to the air they've got Austin Schreiber split out to the near side this time 
He comes in motion. They're going to hand it off, though, to Carter Butt. Cuts it back. He's not going to be – did he get there? I, yeah, I guess he did. Going to be across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. That's going to be enough for a first down. And does, does that motion from, from Schreiber is motioning in, that, that little jet motion made the defensive end have to think just a little bit of maybe a crackback block or a chip, and that gave it just enough time for the, the, the rest of the line to slide down. Carter Butt, nine carries now for 87 yards and a couple of touchdowns. And he's, he's off his first quarter pace. Well, you got to bust another long one, I guess, huh? First and 10, Wildcats. Stride will operate out on the gun this time. A 3-4 look. And they're going to try the counter to Weisenberger again. He cuts it back, broke a tackle, was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, but good uh, inside pressure that time by the Blackhawk war in front. He had really nowhere to go. Yeah, at this point, they're just selling out. They're just get up field, make them have to cut back and have your linebackers behind you. It's... Pretty simple football for their defense now at this point. Just get as far back in the backfield as you can. Second down and 10 for the Wildcats. Football season coming to an end. The fall sports season coming to an end tomorrow. Today and tomorrow here at Camp Randall. Four you, games today, three tomorrow. You already started the winter season on Tuesday. Girls basketball next week. Hockey and boys basketball begins. Be seeing lots of action here on Zaleski Sports. They're going to run the option this time. Strike keeps it and gets it across the 30 out near the 35-yard line. It'll be a third and two. Good keep there by Strike, who's been really smart with his decision so far in, in this first quarter plus. Third down and short here for the Wildcats. Third and a couple. Ball marked right at the 35-yard line. And you know Edgar now with this 14-0 lead with like nothing better than just to grind out a long drive, keep it on the ground, run that clock. And that's something that, that Coach talked about last night. And as you saw in the, in the pregame, he had in years past, but that's what Blackhawk has done. They have had those long, time-consuming drives that just wear you down. Stride under center. They're going to hand it off to Butt. Now he cuts it back. The hole closed quickly. But it looks like he just got enough. He needed two. He got two and a half. Yeah, they're going to call it a first down. Mark it at about the 38-yard line. It's, it's pretty close. And he needed, so he gave him three. I was, I was about to say that uh, there's, there's a drive I covered in level two that Wittenberg wrote. And it was 22 plays and took 10 and a half minutes off the clock. Those types of drives are just backbreaking for any defense. Plus, yeah, your defense then is probably gassed for the rest of the game after that, something like that as well. Especially these smaller divisions where your guys are playing both ways. Right. First and 10 Wildcats. Shewitt will split out wide to the right. Double wing, or a tight end and a wing. Straight under center. Drops straight back to pass. Pump fake. Now he rolls out, being chased. He's going to try to get the corner. Now he throws it, and it's going to be incomplete. Dangerous pass. Threw it into double coverage Very. to try to get to, to Carter Butt, and it was knocked down incomplete. And he threw it well behind him, too. If it, he was, Tegan Streit was lucky he threw it behind him. If he throws it toward trying to lead him or throws it on the numbers, that's a, that's a pick and maybe a pick six. But he threw it far enough behind that the linebacker couldn't catch it. Second down and 10. And also, if the linebacker let that go, Marty was jumping it. Marty was going to have it waiting right, in, right into the number four. She would close wide right again. Single coverage out there. Straight under center, and he gets almost a got hard a jump. count. Almost got a jump there. Yeah, that's right. Inside handoff. No, a pitch. They're going to try to get Weisenberg around the corner, and he's not going to get there. Breaks a tackle, but he's going to lose a couple on that. Yeah, Blackhawk Warren defense is keeping Colby Weisenberger bottled up here for the most part in this first half. It's going to be a loss of maybe one. Call it third down and 11. And one of those linebackers broke through, and then Marty cleaned it up. The only way you can tell it's Marty is because he's wearing the long red sleeves as, as one of the defensive backs. And they, yeah, they've done a really good job on Colby Weisenberger so far. Weisenberger with five rushes and net minus one yard. Third down and 11. They're going to hand it off. Carter Butt, and he's only going to get a couple across the 40 to about the 41, and Edgar's going to have to punt for the first time here this morning. Yeah, gain of five, so it'll be fourth and six. And we'll see uh, Brock Maurer to kick the ball away here. That's, that's a big stand for Blackhawk Warren. They had pinned him back at their 15, gave up a little bit of yardage, but to, to keep him off the scoreboard here was huge. 
Our game brought to you by our, by our game day sponsors, the Edgar Grind, Warner Insurance, Cropping Central, Greg Gruitt Appliance, the Buccaneer Supper Club, and BAME Insurance. <coughs> so Brock Maurer will stand at about his own 27-yard line to punt this one away. Twin safety standing at their own 20 for the Warriors. And it is a wobbler. Going to be, uh, it's going to drop. They let it drop. It takes an Edgar bounce and a roll dead at about the 22-yard line. And that's where Blackhawk Warren will take over this possession with 6.04 to play here in the first half. Edgar leading 14 nothing, And it looks like there's going to be a break, so we'll take one as well. Back in a moment, you're listening to High School Championship Football on Zaleski Sports. Granite Shop, we take great pride in what we do. We offer high-quality natural stone granite as well as a huge selection of man-made stone. With full slabs as well as a variety of partial remnants, you'll have no problem finding the stone that was meant for you. Our high-end, high-quality granite, quartz, and marble is perfect for any kitchen, bathroom, or remodel need. We are locally owned and operated on County Road C near Stratford. We service all of Wisconsin. Fleet Farm has everything you need for every season of life. From tending the vegetable garden season to planting 100 acres of crop season. Fleet Farm is your one-stop shop. Whether it's strawberry jam season, cook your walleye season, or his first set of wheels season. Fleet Farm is built for every season. Fleet Farm, built for real life. Little Sprouts Learning Garden with two convenient central Wisconsin locations. Here's Brooke Severs to tell us about it. Little Sprouts has been around for almost seven years here in Auburndale. In Rudolph, we've been open for about two and a half. We serve here in Auburndale. We have six weeks old up until 12 year olds. And then in Rudolph, we have one year olds up until 12 year olds. The biggest thing that we do with them is we have play-based learning so that they um, learn through play with each other. And social skills are a huge part of what we do with them. Find Little Sprouts Learning Garden on Facebook today. From humble beginnings in 1904, the Wietrich family has grown grassland dairy products into one of the largest processors of butter in the nation. Based in Greenwood, Wisconsin, the family and its hundreds of employees continue their pursuit of providing high quality products that can proudly be served in restaurants and homes across America. And we're back here at Camp Randall. Tom King, Mike Wenlet here on Zaleski Sports, audio-only broadcast of this Division 7 championship game. Blackhawk Warren with the football, first and 10 on their own 22. Edgar leading here 14-0. And split back look, a little more even. Quick hitter. And uh, a few yards there, Jace Affelbeck on the tackle. Pickup of about two on that. That was uh, Lane Marty on the carry. Pickup of about, oh, they're going to give him three, so call it second down and seven. Ball marked at the 25-yard line. And they're just trying to do that, just that quick power, drive forward, get three, four at a time, and they're going to try and turn the clock because, again, they're going to get the ball the third quarter. Maybe just run this one down and get some points. Full house backfield here for the Warriors. They're going to try a sweep around the right side and uh, not going to get the edge. Carter Butt knocks the running back out of bounds. That was Affelbeck who broke that up and not allowed him to get the corner. I was about to say it was blocked really well until Affelbeck just he went basically just went to the ground and made the blockers have to try and step over him and around him. And that allowed the linebacker, the rest of the linebacking core to swarm in and, and knock him out of bounds. I would say since the beginning of the season, Jace Affelbeck is probably the player that has improved the most as far as I, what I can see from, from up here in the booth, especially on the defensive side of the ball. He, he's been uh, getting his name called a lot on defense in the last, I don't know, maybe four or five weeks. Playing really well at that linebacker spot. Going to be third down at about five. They show blitz. They're going to roll off. They're going to throw a pass. They've got a man. It's complete. And a first down yardage. Big hit at the end there by Carter Butt on the receiver. 
Pearson Mahoney, number six. Caught it at about the 34-yard line. That's going to be enough for a first down. You, you might have heard a little cheer there from the Blackhawk Warren uh, crowd. They haven't had much to cheer about here. I think that's just the, what, the second, second, I think first, second first down of the game Yeah, for the Warriors. First and 10 at the 34-yard line. And a rare first down on a pass as well. And yeah, their first completion. Schleem under center. They're going to try that quick hitter again left side, and not much there. Yeah, a game of about four for Marty. Weisenberger made the initial hit, and then it was Carter Butt and Brett Baumgarter to clean up. And again, that just that quick quick handoff, catch the snap, turn, and he's your running backs there. Get four yards a pop. Just yep. keep moving the chains with 4-17 and counting left. They gave him forward progress to the 38. Pickup of about four on that. Second down and six. Once again, a quick dust time. The quarterback Keeper. keeps it, and he's able to move the pile for first down yardage. They're going to mark him out near the 45-yard line. That should be enough for a first down. It looks like they have him about uh, half a yard short. They marked him down short. I don't know no, they, they gave it to him. They just they gave him right at the stick. Yeah, it's going to be a first down. Ball marked at the 44. That's where they needed to get. Good little mix there because they, they, they faked the power. Edgar jumped the running back who they thought was going to have that quick handoff, and Schleem just followed right behind him. Yeah, the running back actually acts as a blocker in that, and the quarterback able to follow him, as you said, pick up positive yardage and first down for the Warriors. Affelbeck showing blitz this time, and uh, the uh, running back didn't get much. Maybe a yard on that to the 45. Yeah, it's like Marty again that time. Weisenberger in there, Maverick butt as well. It, it almost looks like every time she hands it off to he's like he's stumbling and almost overreaching, and it almost looks like he's, he's just fumbling every time. It's It just looks from up here that he is almost about to drop the ball. They mark him at the 46. That's going to be enough for a two-yard gain. Call it second down and eight. And clock continuing to run. Two timeouts left. Handoff this time. They try the right side. Cutting back and not much there. Good job uh, by Lucas Stocky getting in there and slowing down the running back, waiting for his teammates to help him out. Yeah, that's a bad read by the running back. If he keeps it going outside, I think he would have had more space, but he tried to cut it back and just spun right into Stonky. Third down and about eight. Yeah, if you're, if you're going to run a counter play, you just want to keep going around that perimeter. Clock rolling, 2.36 to play first half. Edgar leading 14-0 in this Division 7 championship game. Two receivers in the formation this time, left and right. Schleem under center. Carter Butts showing blitz. They're going to hand it off and try the right side. Running room, nice cutback, and it's going to be first down yardage and more than early breaking tackles and cutting it back inside the 40. Biggest play of the day for the Warriors of Blackhawk Warren getting all the way down to the 36-yard line of the Wildcats. And that time they caught Edgar over-pursuing just a touch on the play side, and he cuts back in, and then Sefrud just did the rest, breaking tackles left and right. Owen oh, Sefrud on the run that time. That was kind of what we were expecting more coming into the game, just that, that run and letting those two, that two-headed attack break tackles. Pickup of 18 on the carry for Sefrud. Now they hand it off another quick hitter, not much there. Looked like uh, Preston Dahlke getting in again to make the stop on the running back. That was Marty that time. I think Colby Schwarer as well, number 60. A minute 45 to play here in the first half. Clock rolling. Edgar leading 14 at nothing. Again, both teams two timeouts to use in the final 90 seconds. Second down and eight. And they're going to hand it off again. No, the quarterback Keep keeps it this time and uh, gets it down inside the 30. Going to be short of the first down. Carter Butt in on the stop of the quarterback, Schleem. They're going to mark him at about the 29-yard line. Going to be short by a couple. And this is the point when you think, when do you start using your timeouts? You have to score this drive. Clock continues to roll. A minute nine to play, and the clock's moving. You, you run all this clock. You get the ball to start the second half. You've got to get points here. Third down and three. Hand it off, try the right side, and they're cutting it back, and they're not going to get there. Trying to pick his way through, but it was Baumgartner who stepped in that time to make the initial hit, and driving the running back, 
Let's see where they give them forward progress. It's going to be fourth down and two, and I believe they did take a timeout now. Yes, they did. 51 seconds on the clock here in the first half, and we'll take a quick one as well. No, we'll, we'll keep, keep it right. It we'll keep it right here. All right. Really good play by Jace Affelbeck as well on the on the play to, to hold the block enough to let Baumgartner come through. It, again, looking off, off the snap that the play was going to be made, or he's going to have the first down, but he, he just hesitated. And there at that point, you, you can't hesitate against this Edgar defense. Our game brought to you in part tonight by, or this morning, by Stop Construction, a premier builder of municipal and industrial water and wastewater treatment systems in the Midwest. Stop Construction, a 100% employee-owned company. I should be able to tell by the sunshine that it's not night, you would think, at this point. <laughs> Unless you were in Alaska, but we are not. <laughs> That's right. That's right. J- those? Just crossed 11 o'clock. <laughs> so the Wildcat defense looking to get a stop here and to keep Blackhawk Warren out of the end zone or off the scoreboard here in the first half. Yeah, they've not. They, I was going to say, there's, I don't think we're going to see any kick. They've not looked at it like they've even tried a field goal this year. And if they did, it'd be 45 yards, which I Probably is outside their range. Well, considering yeah, what we saw in the opening kickoff, yeah, they're not going to try a long field goal. It's a... But again, with his wind Sterling now kind of at their back. But what a stand this would be for Edgar if they can hold him here. So do you run the quick hitter this time, or do you try to get the edge again? They've tried to get the edge a couple of times and haven't been able to do it. I, I run that quick power. He's only got to fall forward for yeah, a yard. Only need a yard here. Fourth down and, and one. 51 full house, seconds. Full house backfield. They're going to try the counter, and they get the edge. First down and more inside the 20-yard line down to about the 18. A little little trickery there. Edgar expecting that run up the middle. Instead, they bounce it outside yeah, and ba- pick up first down yardage. Backside counter for Sefrud. And they're going to quickly get to the line here as the clock stopped while they moved the chains at 45 seconds. Now it starts again. Trips backfield. Long snap count. They're going to try the left side and try to get the corner. They will get the corner. One man to beat. And it's going to be the tackle made at about the 10-yard line. And it looks like he's taking the last one right there. And they just took the final timeout. They'll take their final timeout. We'll keep it right here again. The Rural Virtual Academy is an online tuition-free public school serving students pre-K through high school right here in Wisconsin. The RVA strives to offer families the tools and resources needed to provide a strong academic foundation for each child with the flexibility to learn on their own schedule and at their own pace and even hosts hundreds of free events around the state to foster friendships among the students. For more information, visit ruralvirtual.org. So it's going to be second down and a couple here for the Warriors, but just 26 seconds left on the clock here in the first half. Yeah, 26 seconds, no timeouts. So your play calling is now very limited. You you can't do anything really inside anymore because Edgar can – very craftily, kind of lay on you a little bit, run some clock down. So you got to think. I got to think. Probably Marty on the perimeter somehow, and or, he's, he's got to get out of bounds. Or if they want to go through the air, Schleem has only attempted 37 passes this season, at least, and 13 completions. Uh, Sefrud, the running back, has thrown the ball three times, completed two of those for on touchdowns. a halfback option for a couple of touchdowns as well. Yeah. Yeah. The program we got here says uh, Schleem 35 is 78, eight touchdowns, three picks. But, oh, yeah, my bad, my bad. But really not. No, I, well, okay. They're, count, they're counting the playoff stats in those stats. I, yeah, think, I guess so, yeah. I think my stats are the regular season. Man in motion. Inside handoff and down to the five-yard line. First down, though, he's going to stop the clock, let him get back on the line. Carter Butt made the tackle at about the five, and, yeah, the clock will stop with 22 seconds remaining. They're going to quickly get back to the line. Boy, they, they lined up in a hurry. I think probably quarterback's asking if he should spike the ball. He's asking the sideline, and now we're going to get movement, or what are we going to get? It almost looked like Edgar was trying to time and take it from the snapper, like mid-snap. I'm not sure what they called there. It doesn't look like there's a penalty. It looked like... Oh, he did oh, spike he did. it. He, he clocked he it. He did spike so it. So Edgar, okay. was, Edgar was diving to try and pick it. Got it. That would have been one of the all-time great plays I would have ever <laughs> seen if a defensive lineman dives mm. and picks off the, the spike. So it's second down and goal from the five. Those great jerseys and great pants, man. They've got to go. They're going to hand it off inside. No, the quarterback keeps it. He wants to throw. He's got a man wide open. It's a touchdown. Blackhawk Warren will get on the board. A little rollout and a pass right to the goal line, and it was caught. And trying to, he looks like Sefrud. 
It looks like that's no, number 12. Good. No, I think it's going to be the running back, Marty, right? Was it number four that it caught 12 it? 12 or 4. We'll see what the stat guy has to say here. It was one of the two. We know that. Actually, no. They're going to – well, let's see. Yeah, it is Marty. Marty, they give, Marty. The, they give the catch to Marty. And then the, the old school two-handed sideways ball spike straight down at the end of Wisconsin in the end zone. Five-yard touchdown pass for the Warriors, and, and now we've got a ball game again. They're going to go for a two-point conversion here. And you can't say enough about how important that score was for Blackhawk Warren. Again, if they can hold them for the last 15 seconds and not allow Edgar to do something insane, they have a chance to, to tie the game up or even take the lead maybe in the first drive of the third quarter. Man in motion, and they're going to try the right side. Quick hitter. He's nope. not going to get there unless uh. they, let, they let him go. They're going to say close. no. They're going to say no. Nope. No good. Marty. Gang tackling. Marty just kept those legs going, but it wasn't enough against that stout defense. Baumgartner and Affelbeck, it looked like, along with a number of other white jerseys, stopped him at about the half-yard line. So it will be no good on the two-point <laughs> conversion. The score, 14-6. to six. We'll keep it right here. And... Uh, Edgar will only have 15 seconds left here in the first half. We'll get uh, give you some updated stats at halftime. We're also going to hear that interview again that Jason Zaleski had with Edgar head coach Jerry Sins. We can also tell you about some of the other games that will be going on today and tomorrow. Stratford will play the second game today in Division 6, taking on Darlington, a battle of 12-1 and one teams. That's scheduled for 1 o'clock this afternoon, and, and you'll be able to watch that on Zaleski Sports as well. Darlington, or, think, you'll be able to hear that on Zaleski Sports. I think Darlington, their 13th trip as well, another team that's been here a lot. So both teams huddling up with their special teams coaches on the sideline, determining what they want to do here on this kickoff. And he's got an Edgar does have two timeouts if they get something going because you got to think they'll just fall on this kickoff because not, they're not going to kick it deep. There's only 15 seconds, though, on the clock. Let's see some hook and ladder. They've got uh, that, sec that second level. They've got some hands players there. Baumgartner, Weisenberger's there. It's like Will Hackle. Back up running back. Hackle will be one of the guys back next season. He's a junior. There will be a lot of competition for a lot of spots, skill position spots for Edgar next year. They're graduating a lot of talent. And It's, it's, it's really funny looking at this field, uh, kickoff formation because you see some of their offensive linemen out wide for Blackhawk to try and just pinch. And the kick is a line they drive. It they kick it deep. And it's going to be Weisenberger. I thought he was up farther than that, but Weisenberger is going to take the ball. He breaks it. Oh, he, he had a seam, and somebody got a hold of his ankle and knocked him down at about the 35-yard line. Yeah, either the guy's ankle or his shoelace was untied, and he slipped a little bit. It was one of the two. So only nine seconds remaining here in the first half. Edgar will have a chance to run one, maybe two plays, depending on what they want to do with it. Maybe they'll just take a knee and go in. I don't think you just give it to, to tw number 21 and just see if he can break one. It's happened before. What game was that where they scored with only a handful of seconds left? They went down the field. They were down at their own five-yard line, and three plays later they were in the end zone. Man, it's going to be just in the shotgun. Straight out of the gun. Maybe they want to take a shot deep. They've got single coverage out here. Now they're going to try a delayed handoff on a draw play. Carter Butt's going to get it across the 40 to about the 44. And a timeout. With three seconds left, so they'll have a chance for one more play here. And that should, that should get uh, Carter Butt over 100 yards for the half. They haven't updated it yet. Because he was at 94. Looks like they gave him a gain of eight. Yeah, he got eight yards on that. And again, I haven't taken a math class in... A decade should and a half. Should be 102. <laughs> yes, 12 carries, 102 yards, and two touchdowns for Carter Butt here in the first half. It's a good half of work for your final game. I'll tell you what, though. Carter Butt just strikes me as the guy, kind of guy who uh, wouldn't. it wouldn't matter if he got 300 yards and a bunch of touchdowns or if he got 50 yards as long as his team won the football game and Absolutely. he got a bunch of tackles on defense, I mean, he'd be just as happy. These guys, I mean, just talking to him after the game, the short amount of time when we have him in the house, they just seem to be 
having so much fun. Now, obviously, winning is more fun than losing, and so, you know, it might be different if you're, you're losing every week, but they just seem to have a gas out there playing together. Absolutely. Not to jump ahead of things, but, again, 102 now. The D7 record is 251. It was set last year by Xander Rocco for well, Regis. Well, that is certainly doable, considering what we've seen in other games this season. Because yeah, he had 338 against Boysville. Indeed. And also threw for one. Threw for one and scored five on the ground himself. Yeah. It's one of the all-time performances ever. So they're going to spread out and throw it deep. Strike back to pass. He's got lots of time. He's able to step into the throw. It's Wobbler, though. He's got a man out there. It's going to be Kicks. intercepted. Shewitt kind of gave up on that one. And Blackhawk Warren still with the football, bringing it back the other way. And then Shewitt's going to make the tackle. There is a, there's a flag down on the far side. It's going to be a block in the back on the return. So it's going to end the half either way. But, I mean, you take a chance. You, you're just hoping he doesn't run it back. Yeah, Shewitt, I mean, it looked like Shewitt had a chance to go up and get that football, but sort of uh, didn't make the, the leap that, it, the, that the defender it, did. It could have been P.I., though, before the throw as well, because, I mean, it was... Looks like they are going to call pass interference against Blackhawk Warren. Because he pushed Shewitt off pretty badly. So that is going to give Edgar three. another shot here. 15 yards and another play. An untimed play here to end the first half. Oh, they declined it. They declined the penalty? Yeah. Maybe they don't want to take a chance of another pick. And well, that's kind of interesting. Edgar had a chance to throw another Hail Mary to end the half, and they declined the pass interference penalty, so the half comes to an end. All right, one half in the books. Edgar is on the way to a Division Seven championship, but here but we've got a lot of work to do yet. 14-6 at halftime. You're listening to High School Championship Football on Zaleski Sports. Winter's coming fast, which means it's time to hit the trails. Bill's Service Center has all things you need to stay warm and dry on the trails this winter. With a full selection of jackets, bibs, helmets, boots, casual wear. And don't forget that Bill's is your chainsaw safety gear headquarters. Bill's Service Center is your one-stop connection for all your cold weather riding gear. Don't freeze your jingle bells off. Get your cold weather riding gear at Bill's Service Center. Bill's Service Center, where the adventure begins. Who are we? We are a locally owned and operated business serving our community for over 60 years. We have expanded to three locations with over 1 million square feet of combined production space. We have an elite workforce of over 400 employees. We have built stadiums for the Vegas Raiders, Indianapolis Colts, Atlanta Falcons, Chicago Bears, Minnesota Vikings, and more. Who are we? There's only one answer. I know that I can handle schooling my children because the RVA provides the tools that I need. The RVA has adjusted curriculum by placing children right where their learning is. That's the number one goal, is to make sure that your children are learning. And so you don't move on if, they're, if they haven't grasped the concept. You stop, pause, and you make sure that you grasp that before you move on. The RVA will work with your child's needs and will provide the support and the attention that your child not only needs, but deserves. At Nicolet Bank, we believe that our hometown communities are the backbone of what makes Wisconsin special. From Crivets to Manitowoc and Algoma to Grand Chute, you see a thriving community with Nicolet Bank working as a partner, acting not as a corporation, but a community. When we serve together with local entrepreneurs and leaders, great things happen. That is our guiding principle. A strong and successful hometown means a strong and successful Wisconsin. We are proud to be a part of that. Nicolet Bank. Real people. Real conversations. And we're back here at Camp Randall. We're at halftime of this Division 7 championship game. I'm Tom King. Mike Wenlet with me as Edgar leads 14-6 as they go into the locker room. And let's just recap the scoring here first. The Wildcats got on the board first. Their opening drive, a 42-yard touchdown run for Carter Butt. Colby Weisenberger scored on a two-point conversion, and it was 8 to nothing. Wildcats scored again near the end of the first quarter. Actually, about three minutes left in the first quarter. Four-yard touchdown run for... Carter Butt, the two-point conversion attempt was no good, and the score remained 14 to nothing. And then, late in the first half, Blackhawk Warren had a long, sustained drive and was able to put a touchdown on the board, a five-yard touchdown pass from, uh, from Sleem to uh, Marty. Lane Marty 
Caught the touchdown pass, two-point conversion attempt, no good, and that's where we stand, 14-6 at halftime. Mike's got the stats from this first half of football. Absolutely. So total yards, 152 for the Edgar Wildcats. Blackhawk Warren, 106, 94 on the ground for the Warriors. 149 rushing yards for Edgar in that first half on 23 attempts. at six and a half yards a carry. Three yards passing to 12 for that one. And eight, eight first downs, six first downs for Blackhawk. Five of those came in that final drive as they were able to, to make this one a game again, as they were able to do a really good job running some clock out. Four, Blackhawk Warren passing. Schleem, two of three, 12 yards and a touchdown. Sefrud leading rusher, eight carries, 49 yards, a long of 18. Marty, 10 carries, 34 yards. Decker's done a good job bottling him up, 3.4 a carry. And for Edgar, Tegan Schreit, one of three for three yards and an interception. So they took, they did take that final place. So it does count as an interception because they declined the penalty. Carter Butt, 12 carries, 102 yards, a couple of touchdowns, eight and a half yards a carry, a long of 42. Tegan Streit, four carries, 39 yards. The big job, though, they've done a good job on Colby Weisenberger. Five carries, negative one yard. Shewitt, the only catch for three yards. Very, very quickly, defensively, for Blackhawk, Warren leading tackler. Four tackles a peach, piece for, for Drew Steets, Van Ralty, and Marty, each with four tackles. Marty had the interception at the end of the half. For Edgar Carter, but ten tackles already. In that first half, six solo, Weisenberger and Baumgartner each with five, Shua with two, nobody else with with more than one as we play here, or we as we have halftime coming up here. So that being said, we're going to turn things over to, one more time, our, our interview last night that Jason Zusky did with Coach Sins, and hear what he thinks about his 14th state championship appearance. Welcome to our Fleet Farm pregame show. Fleet Farm, it is Orange Friday tomorrow. Get to Fleet Farm early for all the best deals and the best selection. Now you're here with Edgar Wildcats head coach Jerry Sins to preview our Division 7 state championship game, Edgar and Blackhawk Warren. Um, 14th time. And, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of other teams, a lot of schools, coach, uh, don't, don't ever get to state. Um, how, do you, how do you keep these uh, precious and special over the years? Well, it's always fun because it's always different. There's always different parents. There's always different players. Um, like we were saying before, a lot of times, you know, a guy's dad played <laughs> back in the 80s or the 90s, and, and now his son is playing. So, you know, those kinds of things make it kind of special and kind of nice. Um, we always have new coaches. So, you know, we got a couple of coaches now in the staff. Again, two or three new guys that, that have never uh, – this is their first one down here, and uh, and of course they've never won one. So that that's always part of it too, you know. That okay, we got to see if we can get in, get one for the new coach kind of thing, you know. But <laughs> yeah, uh, I mentioned uh, Blackhawk Warren, of course. Now a, a couple of times ago to state they were just Blackhawk, and now they co-op with the uh, Illinois team. Um, they've kind of had your number. Uh, tell us about the history with Blackhawk over the years. Yeah, in, in two thousand. 16, we ended up playing Shellsburg, who was in their conference. Um, then in 2017, we kind of we had a really really good team. We shut out 10 of the first 11 teams we played. We get we get, I thought kind of upset by Bangor in a blizzard. Um, we had several things that just went the wrong way. Fumbled into the end zone when we had an eight nothing lead. It would have made it you know 15 or 16 to nothing, and it was a touch back to the 20 and. Then there was a muff punt situation that occurred in the fourth quarter deep that allowed them to score and things like this. And then they came to state and beat Blackhawk that year in a state championship game. That was the first time I was really kind of like aware of Blackhawk. Well, then in 2018, all of a sudden, Blackhawk's back again, mm -hmm. and we're back. And um, we were ahead 15-14 at halftime, um, did not play a good second half. That year, it was a cold year. We didn't get to practice outside for a couple weeks coming in. I thought our skills were just not good. I think we fumbled six times in that game and lost four or five of them. Mm -hmm. And um, they finally pushed a touchdown in in the fourth quarter and ended up beating us like 21 to 15 or whatever it was. Well, then in 2019, but I, I thought they kind of caught us by surprise a little, a little bit. You know, they, they were tougher, physically tougher than, you know, we really thought they might be. Um, 2019, I thought we were a little more 
well prepared physically, mentally, to play them, even though we were playing a lot of sophomores and juniors. And, um, and that game ended up six to nothing. They, they pulled one kind of trick play on us. Um, we thought our safety was going to intercept the thing, and the ball went just over. The quarterback rolled all the way to the right mm -hmm. sideline, threw 50 yards across the field, all the way back to mm -hmm. a back who snuck out of the backfield, mm -hmm. and um, caught it just over the fingertips of our safety and ran down the sideline for a touchdown. We ended up scoring twice, we thought, that game, but both of them were called back. One for yes, the hole, right. I don't remember what the other one was. Yep. And that game ended six to nothing, so it was a hard-fought game. Well, then in 2020, we finally had all those guys as seniors that had played at State at 18 and 19 as sophomores and juniors, and then in 2020, we mm -hmm. don't have a... <laughs> yeah, all rubbed up to go with nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, and those, no state championship game. Well, then those guys all graduated, but um, neither one of us is, have been back to state since 2019. Then, 2021, there were two different teams. 2022, there were two different teams. So now, here both of us are back. So for both of us, it's the third time at state against the mm -hmm. same opponent, mm -hmm. which is pretty unusual. Uh, very unusual for sure. We'll get back to Blackhawk Warren in just a minute. Uh, let's talk about your team a little bit. Um, ran into a, a pretty good Boyceville team. The Bulldogs scored scored some points on you. That hadn't happened in a long time in this season. Not since week two had you been scored upon, but they scored a bunch. Um, and then a real physical battle uh, with, uh, with Banger last week that got you here. Uh, tell us about uh, your team. Um, have they reached their peak? And, and you know, just tell us about, about your, your team's kind of state in general right now coming into this championship game. Well, we're pretty healthy. Um, which is good because that's always kind of a factor too after playing, you know, tough teams in the playoffs, the end of the season, you know, Kobe, Auburndale, you know, which were good teams, you know, one seeded teams in the playoffs mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. And, um, but we, but yeah, we ended up pretty healthy. We always try to save our guys all year for the end of the season. A guy like Carter Butt, he didn't carry much at all. Some of the games that we were winning pretty handily, he might only had five, six carries. Well, now he's carrying it 25 or 30 times, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, But we, we kind of told him that that, that might be the way it is because it's, it's been that way for a long time. Um, the Boysville game was a shocker to everybody. I think the boys will, and to us, they'd only given up about 51 points all year, and yeah. somehow we put up 52 on them and yep. never, never punted at all. Yeah, yep. Um, of course, we had to try to keep scoring because they kept scoring. Um, so then we had to keep our offense <laughs> going too and not sub or anything like normally we would have we subbed, but we, we couldn't afford to. Um, they hit us with some big plays, which once again, all four of their touchdowns are big plays, and Mm -hmm. And I, we hadn't given up a big play all year. Had we shut out nine teams in a row coming into that game, so uh, we had to kind of reevaluate on defense. Made a few changes, and then I thought played a little better against Bangor, and uh, they, they got the uh, you know the field goal away in the end with a few seconds left to uh, to break the shutout. But um, but I thought we played pretty well against them. Bangor is very physical, just like I think Blackhawk Warren is going to be. Yeah. Sure. All right, um, kind of a fun thing in the in the Bangor game. A couple of your guys uh, late going in for a touchdown, high fiving down the sideline. Um, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I never noticed it, of course, till I watched the tape, and then we were watching the tape, and coaches, said, Do those guys high five each other about the tap. <laughs> I want to run it back. Yep. And, and so we watched again, and, and of course they they were just laughing at each other, and. Uh, we always have this thing we call a six-point block that, hey, if a guy's breaking away, um, you know, a six-point block, yeah, you, you get six points for the touchdown there. You really don't have to block anybody. You just run down in the end zone and celebrate with them, see? <laughs> and so that's what the six-point block is, <laughs> just sprint to the end zone. So, of course, that's what Kobe was doing. Uh -huh. and he realized he didn't have to block anybody, so all right, I'm, I'm here for you, buddy. <laughs> uh, you know, these are high school kids, and yeah. it, part of uh, playing, uh, being a student athlete is having some fun and letting loose sometimes, and um, I thought they were really having fun with each other, and that's right. that's uh, good Good sportsmanship in that way. Um, all right, um, so tell us, you've had a week now to get ready for Blackhawk Warren. Uh, what do you know about that football club? They basically are very, very similar to what they were in 2018 and 2019. Run pretty much the exact same plays. Defense has changed a little. Got some big linemen, just like they've always had. Their running backs aren't as big as they've been in the past. They're like 160, 170 pound guys. Um, 
they have three guys that have carried the ball, one guy 130 times, one guy 150 times, one guy 180 or 90 times. Mm -hmm. And um, one of them has 24 touchdowns, another guy's got 16 touchdowns, and, and so on. And, and the, But they run a pretty basic attack. Um, the thing they kind of beat us with each of those other two years is they just kept the ball away from us. Um, Regis had done that in 2009 too, but our offense was so explosive then that we just scored every time we got it back anyway. Um, so that strategy didn't cost us, you know, when, when Regis used it against us in 2009, but, but it kind of did when, when Blackhawk kept the ball. I think we only ran six or seven plays in the whole second half in 2019. Mm -hmm. They got the ball, kept the ball for eight, nine minutes. Didn't score, but kept it that long. We got it back, and I remember if we fumbled or if we just, you know, three downs and out or whatever, and they basically kept it the rest of the game. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. so you, you can get the ball back. You only get like three, four offensive plays the whole half, um, and I think that's kind of like part of their strategy to uh, keep their defense off the field as long as they can by allowing their offense to stay on the field. And so, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to have to. Uh, See if we can uh, change that script a little tomorrow. Um, let's begin to uh, wrap up our, our Fleet, Fa Fleet Farm pregame show. Again, Orange Friday tomorrow. Get to Fleet Farm early for the best deals and the best selection. Uh, first quarter, Coach. Uh, people watching the game uh, in person, at home, wherever they might be. Regardless of what it says on the scoreboard, how will, how will people know that things are going according to plan in the first quarter? Well, I think, you know, we're, we're just playing relax, playing loose. Um, we 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 showed the kids the 2016 uh, game when we played Shellsbury. And you could tell right away in the first quarter that, of that game that our kids were just having fun. It was a day like tomorrow was going to be. It was 70 degrees. It was sunny. Thank goodness. It was, it was beautiful. <laughs> and we're just running around having fun. And, of course, that game we were at 22 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. And and, um, and I think Shellsbury coming into that game had only allowed 50 or 51 points all season. Um, and we ended up with 36 at halftime in that game. And then there wasn't any scoring to speak of in the second half. We, both teams played a lot of reserves. But um, I think that's the key. I think you got to play relaxed. You can't make the game bigger than it is. No, guys, it's a fun experience. Come down here, enjoy it, and, uh, and just do what you've been doing all year. So I, I hope we're not tight. Everything we did tonight was try to relax them and Watch, remember the Titans on the way down on the bus because that's always a fun film to watch mm -hmm. with all the music mm -hmm. and, and so on. Yeah, Coach Jerry sends in the Edgar Wildcats. Best of luck in the ball game. Thank you very much. Yeah, you got it, Jerry. All right, kickoff coming up next on Zaleski Sports. Want to save even more at Fleet Farm? Well, now you can with Fleet Rewards. It's free to sign up and there's no credit card required. Using Fleet Rewards is easy. Earn points every time you shop. Plus, get exclusive member offers, birthday and anniversary perks, free tire rotations, and more. Download the Fleet Farm app or create an account at fleetfarm.com rewards to start earning points today. Fleet Farm, proudly serving the Midwest since 1955. You're tuned in to Better Halves. Mike, what are you looking for? Skip, I'm not getting older, I'm getting better. I still got big plans for my life and my Medicare. I know exactly what you want from Medicare. Same as all the other guys, me. <laughs> hey Mike, I'm Sheila from Security and I'm just like you. In fact, I'm from your neighborhood and I've got a Medicare plan that treats you like you. Did it just get better in here? We're back here at Camp Randall Stadium. The sun is shining on this beautiful mid-November day for championship football. The WIAA state title games today in Division 7, 6, 5, and 4. And then tomorrow, three more games on the schedule in Divisions 1, 2, and 3. Division 7 up first, of course, and Edgar leading here at halftime against Blackhawk Warren 14-6. to six. Carter Butt, 12 carries, 102 yards for the Wildcats. But... Blackhawk Warren scored late in the first half to make it a one-score game, and uh, they get the football to start the second half. Yeah, it's, the, it's the benefit of winning the coin toss, first coin toss of the state championship week, and they deferred, and they, they, they knew they needed to score, and calling that passing play when they did worked really well for them. And they go down and score here, get the two-point conversion, tie this game up, and it's game on. Let's go. 
Yeah, most of the Edgar offense was in that first quarter. It appears that the Warriors made enough adjustments to at least slow down this Edgar Wildcat offense uh, here in the second quarter of football. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if they can get that going again. Uh, And really with Carter Budd, he had the 100 yards, but two of those carries were for 64. So they did a pretty good job outside of those two carries of limiting him as well. So it'll be the Edgar defense on the field first here to begin the second half of action. And you talk about, again, a beautiful day right now, 58 degrees outside. Does not feel like November. The other three games today, Division Six Stratford against Darlington. That's a 1 o'clock start. Jason Zaleski and Dan Ross will have the game for you here, the audio version of the game here on Zaleski Sports. Also, Wrightstown taking on Lacrosse Aquinas in the Division Five championship game at 4 this afternoon and is scheduled for 7 o'clock tonight, Division Four. It's Luxembourg-Casco at 12-1 and against the undefeated squad from Lodi. They're 13-0 and on the season. A couple of storylines now and very quickly. Obviously, Stratford looking to go back-to-back. Aquinas looking for a three-peat in Division 5 against the only team that throws less than these two teams in Wrightstown. And Lodi undefeated. Lux Casco making their first ever appearance here at the tournament for the Spartans. Good to see uh, the Northeastern Conference being represented there. Tomorrow it'll be Rice Twice. Lake and Grafton in Division 3. Wanakee plays Badger, Lake Geneva Badger in Division 2. And then the Division 1 championship game has Milwaukee Marquette taking on the undefeated team from Franklin. All right, we're ready to go. Edgar, ready to kick off. Harrison Gravine will put the boot to it here. High end over end kick going to be taken at about the 11 yard line and lots of running room across the 20. And then it's going to be a beautiful open field tackle by uh, Lucas Stocky slowing that return down. There's a flag on the play as well. Can be moved farther back as well. That ended up about the 30. Is it quite the toss by the official? A good 10 yards. Lucas Stocky coming in and making a uh, hard open field tackle on the return man. And they're going to mark that off. Looks like he's, yeah, he's pointing toward Blackhawk Warren. And so that'll be another penalty. Edgar did not commit an infraction. First half, this will well, be the fourth. You, now you've jinxed him completely. And it will be against the Warriors, and that'll mark him back as we thought. The flag sitting at the 30-yard line, which is where the block in the back occurred. So 10 from the spot, that one should be. So it ends up being about essentially a two-yard penalty from where... Yeah, the tackle was made right near the 20-yard line, so... Not too much damage done with, with the infraction. I mean, that, that... You know, you look at that, you go, how can that make any sense? The tackle was made at the 20. The penalty flag was thrown at the... Uh, the 30. At the 30, and so they're going to get the ball right where they would have got it anyway. Jerry Sins, is, Jerry Sins is talking about it with the official. I mean, that doesn't make any sense at all, does it? I think downfield it's from – I thought I was thinking downfield might be from the end of the play if it's behind or – or the only way is, is if it's 10 yards from the spot of the foul. The officials are talking about it as well. It's an eight, it's an eight-yard swing right now because he was tackled at the 22. So it's either going to be first and 10 at the 20 or first and 10 at the 12. And the officials seem to be a bit confused as well. They're going to talk about it again here near the football. Yeah, they're they're, they're going to bring the other the other official the, the official who threw the flag out and talk to him. Are you making sure that his flag was at the right spot? So we've got a little bit of controversy here to start the second half on the opening kickoff as to where the penalty will be marked off, and they're going to mark him back further, I think. Yeah, should be. it looks like they're going to mark it from the end of the play. N- n- no. Or, yes. Yes. They'll move it back to the 12. That seems to me to make more sense. Yes, because it, it was downfield. It'd be from the end of the play. I think if it was behind the play, it'd be from the spot as well, which would make it even worse. So it'll be first and 10 Warriors from their own 12-yard line to begin this second half of football. Either way, it's still first and 10, but now... Going with, with the wind at your back, it's a little longer. Edgar staying in that 4-3 defense. They're going to pitch it and try the right side, and cutting it back, not much there. Affelbeck kept the play inside, didn't let him get the corner, and uh, going to be dropped after a short pickup. They're going to mark it at about the 14-yard line, so call it a gain of about two. Interesting move there by Austin Jacobs at the nose. He, he, he was expecting that quick power dive, and he just dove. I don't know if he was diving at the player or his air, but he just dove. And they tossed it backside on him. Second down and eight. 
It almost worked as a cut block. Now a uh, three-man front. Weisenberger showing blitz. He can come from that backside, and he's going to come. They're going to cut it back inside, and positive yardage out near the 19. Going to be short of the first down. About three yards. That was Owen Sefrud on the uh, carry for the Warriors, and it's going to be a third down and about three. And, and Weisenberger did come on the blitz that time. He just went to meet the block, but he didn't shed the block. He just, he just kind of just battled with him and hoping hoped his other linebackers are going to be behind him, and this it wasn't quite enough to fill. They'll so bring Weisenberger from that side, and they'll bring Carter Butt up the middle, although he hasn't rushed up the middle or blitzed up the middle as much as he normally does. doesn't have to because they don't throw the ball very much, but... Now Affelbeck showing blitz. He's going to come in, and uh, it's going to be a he's short. close to the first down, but I think he's short. He's going to be a yard short. Sefrut again, and Affelbeck slow to get up after being involved in that tackle. Maverick Butt in there as well. Really good play by Weisenberger that time. To shed, that time he did shed the block. He was able to, to trip him up a yard short. Fourth and down and one, and Blackhawk Warren's going to punt. You, you have to. It's still a one-score game. You're at your own 21. However, it's only a yard. Yeah. You got to stay home on a possible fake punt, maybe a snap to the one of the up men. Yeah, with, with they've got three up men here. You could see, a, and one it looks like two of them, or one of them like an offensive lineman, so you could see like some sort of counter. Carter Butt standing back. No, they are going to punt the football away, and it's going to take a bounce near midfield. Carter Butt's going to grab it and try to get the corner, and he will. He's got a man to block him. He's going to dance down the sideline and out of get it into uh, Blackhawk Warren territory, though. They're going to mark him out at about the 38-yard line. So good return for Carter. But, man, that is a huge thing right there to have them punt that football on a fourth and short, and then you're going to get the ball in their territory for your first possession of the second half. And he and if he had not stepped out of bounds, he probably was gone. They they have the uh, they have the ability they tr they try to set up a wall on punt returns and allow the running back to get down the sideline. That time they didn't really have a wall there. They had one blocker, and but it, it allowed Carter Butt to pick up an extra 15 yards on that. And per and Jason just made a good point, telling me you kind of wasted you winning the coin toss there. Absolutely. You, at that point, you double up maybe maybe think about the fake or go for it. So the Wildcats have it. First and 10 on the Blackhawk Warren 38. They give it to Weisenberger. He cuts it back, and he's going to pick up positive yardage after it looked like he was going to get blown up in the backfield. He gets it down inside the 35 to about the 33. Yeah, give him a gain of five on that play. And he had, after he had a, a little bit of a rough first half, rushing the ball with five carries for negative one yards there, including that one day, the first drive that had a loss of six. But that was a good job cutting back. Second they, down they, and five. They had a, uh, Blackhawk had it strung out pretty well there. I think Maurer is split up to the far side. Stride under center. Man comes in motion. They're going to hand it off to Butt. Tries the left side, puts his head down, gets it down inside the 30. He's going to be short of the first down. They're going to mark him at about the 29, which is about a yard short. So it's going to be third down and one. Schleem there diving to make the tackle. 8.45 to play here, third quarter. Edgar leading 14 to 6. And I think they're realizing the only way you can really tackle Carter Butt on the first on the first attempt is to go for the knees. Yeah, you're not going to tackle Carter Butt high. I mean, it's just unless you get two or three, and even then he'll carry he'll carry them for an extra five or six yards usually. And if you hold them up, then you then you get the lineman coming behind them to push. That's right. Schuett's going to split out wide right here. Single coverage out there. Already f almost four minutes gone by here in the third quarter. Straight under center. They hand it to Butt again. He's got a little bit of running room. Bounces off a tackle. Down inside the 20. Down inside the 10. Stays on his feet. Touchdown, Wildcats. And just like that, Edgar has uh, all of a sudden busted this game a little bit open. And the third touchdown for the all-time leading rusher in Wildcat history. And that is going to be the uh, 34th touchdown of the season as well for Carter Butt. You know, just like that, you thought you had a game with Blackhawk Warren getting the football to start the second half. They go three and out, punting on fourth and one from their own territory, and Edgar doesn't take him long to get in the end zone. And that's that's going to be the play they're going to look back on is that fourth down because they've been doing that power dive all game, and it's been getting positive yards every time. They have not been stopped for they had not been stopped for a loss that play the entire day. 
Lynn Sedley side kick it away. They get the big return. 29-yard touchdown run for Carter Butt, giving him 134 yards on the day. They're going to kick the extra no point. Now they're going to fake it. Stride picks it up. He's going to run it in the end zone untouched. They set up to kick the extra point, but that was a design play. Strike just grabbed it and took it off on the right side, and uh, there wasn't anybody near him. He walked in untouched. And a good play by Tegan also to not have his knee down when he caught it. That's true. So a two-point conversion is good. It puts the Wildcats up here 22-6. to six. We'll take a break and come back with more. You're listening to High School Championship Football on Zaleski Sports. We at the Edgar Grind welcome all to our spot. We are open seven days a week until 10 p.m. Whether you're celebrating, looking for free Wi-Fi, relaxing, or trying to warm up, we have a little something for everyone. We offer local fresh coffee drinks, smoothies, ice cream, snacks, and food. We strive for affordable and healthy options for everyone and can't wait to see you. Whether you're just beginning your educational journey or seeking a new opportunity, we're here for you. At North Central Technical College, we have unique partnerships with four-year colleges that allow you to transfer seamlessly to and from our campus, saving you time and money. With hundreds of transfer options available, the path to a bachelor's degree and a great paying career are just a step away. North Central Technical College. Start here, go anywhere. Cropping Central, conveniently located between Edgar and Stratford on County Road M, 715-352-2843. Let Cropping Central take care of your field plans, yield mapping, crop scouting, and crop protection, including hail insurance. Cropping Central, 715-352-2843, and visit them on County Road M, west of Edgar. I think there are a lot of benefits to schooling our children from home. We get to spend a lot of time with them and there are eureka moments like seeing them walk for the first time or they figure something out and they're so excited about it. The RVA really does work with each family to individualize each child's education to help them really succeed. This is like the best thing in Wisconsin in terms of school. For us, the RVA was our first and best choice of schools to choose. We love the RVA! We're back here at Camp Randall Stadium where the Edgar Wildcats have uh, jumped out now to a 22-6 lead in this Division 7 championship game. I was telling the guys here uh, during the break, I've been doing games a long time. The best high school player I ever saw that I ever did games for was Mark Zalewski, who played for Was East and then came down here and played for the Badgers back in the 90s. And uh, Carter Butt is right there with him. It's just an un- unbelievable performance for Butt this entire season and doing it again here today. And he's got a shot now at the uh, touchdown record in Division Seven title games. Yeah, the record is, is four. Yards is 251. So he has a chance at that as well, potentially. But uh, yeah, I was going to say, he reminds me of the best player I ever covered, which was Leo Chanel for Grantsburg, who, who, who was, I mean, he was so much bigger than everyone else. He was 6'3", 235 in Division Six football. And in him, and I saw, I covered a game for Braylon Allen, and, and as far as high school level performances, but is right up there with those guys. He, yeah. is, he is singularly, on both sides of the ball, a dominant force. Harrison Green will kick off here for the Wildcats. It's a squibber. Going to be fielded by one of the upmen at about the 25, 30-yard line, trying to get the corner and, and not getting there. And making the open field tackle there for the Wildcats was Brock Maurer. And again, a quick update as well for Carter, but his, his stat line, 14 carries, 134 yards, three touchdowns. So he is 117 yards away from tying the record, which was set last year by Xander Rocco. At 251, and one touchdown away from tying Isaac Tuttle of Glenwood City and Cody Rosemeyer of Gilman, which is done in 2012 and 2010, respectively, for four touchdowns. you got to believe he's going to get another shot to get in the end zone in this game. First and 10, though, for the uh, Warriors here. Now it's up to the Edgar defense to slow him down again. They try the pitch this time. They have some running room outside, but it closed quickly. And is that Weisenberger? That was straight. That's Tucker, Tucker Strite, the sophomore, coming in to make the stop on the outside and uh, stopping a big gain right there. If he doesn't make that tackle, they're going to pick up a, a, lot. a big chunk of yardage, but instead they only get one on that pitch around the right side. Second down and nine. Great job on uh, by Shalim on the pitch, but a better job shedding the block and diving at the, at the to trip him up by Strite. That, that's, a, that's a veteran play by the sophomore. Second down and nine. 7.22 to play here, third quarter. Edgar leading 22-6. Offset backfield. 
They're going to try the quick hitter this time, and positive yardage out across the 35 to about the 36. And probably the play they should have run on that fourth down last drive. Hmm. They, have, they haven't been stopped for less than three or four yards every time they run it. You know, coaches will tell you, especially coaches that, that don't make it uh, at championship games, they lose games like this, they'll be thinking about plays like that for the entire offseason. I mean, and, and the uh, Blackhawk Warren coach will be thinking about that play, I would imagine, for a long time if, in fact, they can't come back and win this game. Third down and five now for the Wildcats. Two receivers in the formation Tight for Blackhawk right. Warren. They're going to hand it off. Now they're going to play action. They want to throw. They got a man. It's going to be intercepted. Intercepted by Tucker Strite, and he's going to be knocked down at about the 26-yard line. So a great series right there for the sophomore, Tucker Strite, who gets the pick, and Edgar has the football in a short field on top of it. Have yourself a ball game, young man. But uh, that, that was an interesting idea on the throw. He tried to drop it over the shallow coverage, but you just, it was, there was two defenders there. Yeah, and he, there double was, coverage here. There was no place to go with the football. You know, he, he was going for, for what they call a turkey hole, and he just didn't have enough on it. Well, and that's going to happen, I would, I would imagine, with teams that don't pass a lot. You know, only, that, the, only the fourth interception of the year for, for Schleen. So it's first down and 10 for Edgar at the 27-yard line of the Warriors. 6.26 to play here, third quarter. Touch on here and get the trophy ready. <laughs> I'm not calling a dagger yet. We'll see. <laughs> Shewitt comes in motion. They hand it off to Weisenberger. Ball is stripped. It's loose, but it goes right into the hands of one of his teammates. Is that Butt? butt yeah, yeah it's I, Weisenberger had the ball stripped, and Butt grabbed it out it, of the air. <laughs> are we sure it was stripped, or was it he just actually pitched it? It was so bizarre. It, uh, it's a positive gain. They, they're going to give him about a half, well, maybe. Yeah, I gave him about he, a yard he, on it, that. it was stripped away. It's going to be second down and nine. So in game, when, you, when, you've, when you've made it here 14 times, sometimes it's better lucky than good. Indeed. That, and after the reception, that would have been an unreal play. Or it's just, this game has been fascinating, the very, at the very least, with some of the plays we've seen. Second down and nine for the Wildcats. Shewitt splits wide right, offset backfield. Man comes in motion. That's the tight end, Baumgartner. Now he sets. And they're going to hand it off to Butt. They're going to try the left side. Can he get the corner? No. He's going to be wrapped up and breaks a tackle. Oh, they whistled it they dead. It. Wow. They blew it forward you progress. You can't do that with Carter Butt. They whistled the play dead at the 25-yard line, and he broke away from the tackle. Now, who's to say that the re uh, the defender didn't let up heard when a he whistle. heard the whistle? But, boy, oh, boy, with Carter Butt, you've got to let the play go all the way to the end because he'll break tackles like that on a regular oh, basis. Only time you blow the whistle there is if there's two or three guys there, not just one. It, it was Marty who wrapped him up. Marty, 6'2", 170. They're going to call Carter, him. Carter Butt, 5'10", 215. Call him down at the 25-yard line. So now it's third down and long, third down and eight for the Wildcats. Yeah, because if, if – if, yeah, because he did, he did spin away. They must have heard the whistle and let him go because otherwise he was going to prance into the end zone. High backfield this time. Play action. Strite rolls out. He's got running room. Now he's going to think about throwing. He made a move and got free, and now he's going to be dropped. He's going to be short of the first down. He reaches for the 19. Yeah, he, he had a couple guys wide open. He, if he looks, Weisenberger just standing at the sticks by himself. So it's going to be short of the first down, four down territory, you would think, for Edgar here at the ninth. They're going to mark him down at the 20. I let the big fella try a field goal. They, they didn't try a field goal from the five- or six-yard line last week. I don't think they're going to try a field goal here. I know, but everyone likes big guy <laughs> field goals. It's, I mean, we saw in the NFL a running back field goal. Why can't we get one here? A former Badger kicked that field goal, uh, Dari Ogunwale. Yep. Fourth down and three. Schreiber, the receiver. He comes in motion. They're going to hand it off. This is Butt. Cuts it back. First down. Yardage He's more. Gone. Breaks it free into the end zone. Into the record Carter books. Butt has tied the high school Division Seven championship record for touchdowns in a game with his fourth of the morning. And with 3.50 to go here in the third, 22-point lead, a chance to make it. Looks like they're going to. Kick it this time? This is how this, this is how Edgar all year demoralized teams. By the second half, they were really teams really had no interest in trying to tackle Carter Butt after being pounded on for most of the game. And uh, that time Butt broke through and I mean, well, what's what's the quote from Herb Brooks on the hockey rink? Well, I can't guarantee you'll be the best team, but you will be the best conditioned. 
Yeah, they just they just grind down these defenses, and by the second half, they're able in many cases to put games away, and that's what they're doing right here. 28-6, to six, pending the extra point. They're going to kick it or attempt to kick it with Harrison Gravine. If you run the same play a second time in a row. 20-yard touchdown run for Carter Butt that time. Strike takes the snap. Kick is up, and the kick is good. 29-6. to six. Edgar will take a timeout. Come back with more. You're listening to Championship Football on Zaleski Sports. Culligan Water delivers. From your first call, to your first sip, to your first soak. Culligan, give us a tap. The only water that comes with a van. From humble beginnings in 1904, the Wietrich family has grown grassland dairy products into one of the largest processors of butter in the nation. Based in Greenwood, Wisconsin, the family and its hundreds of employees continue their pursuit of providing high-quality products that can proudly be served in restaurants and homes across America. Warner Insurance Agency is a family-owned insurance business that has been helping customers with all of their pro- Why work for Stop Construction? Everybody. Warner Insurance Agency is a family-owned insurance business that has been helping customers with all of their property and casualty insurance needs for three generations. Let Warner Insurance help with your small business, farm, home, auto, and recreational vehicle insurance needs. Warner Insurance, proud supporter of the Edgar Wildcats. Why work for Stop Construction? Everybody around you is just family. Everybody seems to bond together and get along good and they, I believe, truly care about their employees. Stop has a, a great benefits package. Stop is an employee-owned company that uh, puts a, a large emphasis on work-life balance. And everybody wants to see everybody succeed. It's a good place to work. Join the team at Stop Construction. Apply now at StobCO.com. And we're back here at Camp Randall where the Edgar Wildcats have jumped out now to a 29-6 lead, 3.50 to play in the third quarter. Our game brought to you in part by Ag Country Farm Credit Services, a farmer-owned co-op offering a wide array of custom financing and financial services. From loans and leases to crop insurance and tax and records, they have you covered. Contact Ag Country and Stevens Point to get started. Also, our game day sponsors on the program today include the Edgar Grind, Werner Insurance, Cropping Central, Greg Gruitt Appliance, the Buccaneers Supper Club, and BAME Insurance. Insurance. Carter Butt, 16 carries, 155 yards and four touchdowns, averaging 9.7 yards per carry today. Yeah, he's not going to break the record for yards per carry. That Well, he might. It's 13.1 from Carter Horseman of Banger in 2017. He had 11 carries, 144, but he is less than 100 yards away from the single-game yardage record and one touchdown away from breaking the Division 7 record, 7 record and tying the record for all divisions, which was a Division Two on Sam Santiago Lloyd of Brookfield East back in 2016. Something tells me he's going to get another chance today. Harrison right. Gravine kicks it away. It's going to be a short kick, fielded on the bounce, and they go to a knee at the 18-yard line. That's a, that's a mistake. So no return on the kickoff, and Blackhawk Warren will have the ball first and 10 on their own 18. And yeah, that was, I think, Pearson Mahoney who went to a knee. Actually, I think they, they changed, I think his number was everything. It's, it might have been Andrew Figgy, the number eight. Or num it's, hard, it's hard to tell. Again, eight and six with these jerseys from eight levels up. Yeah, great jerseys, great pants. Red outline. Black numerals in red outline. Not the easiest to see. They'll come to the line now. Receiver split out wide right. Single coverage out there. Man comes in motion. Affelbeck shows blitz. They're going to try an inside handoff or try the right side. Not much there. Carter Butt makes the hit on the initial stop, though, for the Wildcats. Trying to pick up a number Weisenberger. there. Colby Weisenberger. No surprises there. Weisenberger starts it. Carter Butt finishes it. Pickup of three on the carry. Second down and seven for the Warriors. And for the Warriors, 325 left here in the third. Obviously, you're down three scores. It is a must-score drive 
period. Well, we talked about this, how hard it is for a team that runs the ball all the time to, play to come behind. back from a big deficit, and that's what the Warriors are facing here right now. Split backfield. Sleem going to hand it off. They try the right side again. They've got a hole this time, breaking it into the secondary. First down yardage out across the 30 to about the 33. Good run that time. Good job by the war Warrior offensive line, opening up some room it's like Sefrud. for Sefrud. Sefrud's only a junior, and the quarterback, Schleem, only a junior as well. They'll be back for Blackhawk Warren next year. Lane Marty is a senior. He'll be graduating. It looks like they have a relatively young team, only a handful of seniors on this roster. Edgar. I'm looking at five, five seniors on this Blackhawk Warren roster. Yeah, and Edgar going a little bit smaller this play, too. Looks like Schnelly in. Jacobs getting a little bit of a breather. So they've got two receivers in the formation this time. Schleem under the gun again. They're under the center again. He's going to roll out. He wants to throw. Here comes the blitz. He gets rid of it. It's caught. First down yard. No, it's going to be uh, out across the 35 to about the 37. So a pickup of about four or five on that. Seth Root again, that time on the catch. So a gain of four. Coming in on the blitz that time, or coming in pressuring the quarterback that is, was, was defensive lineman Lucas Stonky. And uh, Schleem was able to get rid of it in time and complete it. It's going to be second down and about six. And Sefrud himself having a solid game, 13 carries, 71 yards. That's that's not a bad day. It's only a bad day when you compare it to the day Carter Butt's having. They try the left side now this time, and not much there. Baumgartner wrapped up the running back, maybe got a yard on that. Yeah, that time was Marty, and he tried to use his speed on the edge, and no one blocked the defensive end. Isn't They pulled the guards around, they pulled the other linemen, but nobody blocked the first guy. And that was Brett Baumgartner who... Uh, of course, plays tight end on offense and that outside linebacker defensive end spot on defense, he'll most, be at, he'll mostly be, linebacker. He'll be at center in a couple of weeks. <laughs> and then in left field in the spring. Yeah, a lot of these guys play basketball, don't they? Uh, I, I agree. A school like Edgar, you almost have to play every sport, right? I mean, there's a try the handoff this time. They break a tackle, getting it outside. That's the quarterback, and he's going to have first down yardage and more across midfield and inside the 45-yard line. Good run that time by Eli Schleem, the quarterback for Blackhawk Warren, and another first down. I don't know if I've ever seen so many head fakes in traffic by a runner there when still breaking tackles with it. His, his lower body really wasn't changing direction, but his head was, was bobbling everywhere. But he was able to make a really nice play just following like again. So I guess I'm looking ahead. When they line up, Marty's always going to be the right halfback. Sefford will be the left halfback. You know, the we were just talking about basketball starting up. You know that the boys' basketball coach and the wrestling coach at Edgar are just hoping no one gets hurt in the rest of this game, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Under center, Schleem. Bobbled snap, it's loose! Edgar's got it, and running the other way with it is Colby Weisenberger. He's going to be tackled at about the 31-yard line. The snap was bobbled, and then it was lost, and it bounced right up into the hands of Colby Weisenberger, and Edgar will have the football again and another short field. A play that cannot happen. Just cannot happen. You can't be bobbling snaps. If you if you get not get it stripped, so be it. But you can't. He, they motion Sefrud out of the formation into the slot right, and he tapped his quarterback saying, hey, I'm, I'm out. I'm out of here. They took the snap. It almost looked like he turned to hand it to him and just didn't have the football. It was, it was just a disjointed play from the very opening formation, and the Wildcats now... Big, I mean, big Edgar crowd on the east side of, the, of Camp Randall, and they exploded after that one because they can sense things now with a, just a minute three to play in the third quarter and a 29-6 to six lead, and now having the football again with a short field. First and 10 at the Blackhawk Warren 31-yard line. As a quick shout-out to someone watching, watching overseas, watching this one, an Edgar alumni. Shoot in motion. They hand it off to Affelbeck this time. Breaks a tackle, but then he's wrapped up and dropped. He's fighting for yardage, though. He's actually going to get positive yardage out of that after he got hit and right at the line of scrimmage. That made me nervous for a second. I thought they might call a flag because I think he got pulled forward a little bit by one of the linemen at the very end, just kind of from the front side, grabbed him and pulled him. But I'm glad they didn't. So a gain of three on the play. Yep, three for Jace Affelbeck. So and I would imagine giving Carter Butt a little bit of a breather here. They'll maybe run Affelbeck a few times. They, they let, I don't say let, but uh, Jace Affelbeck got a pair of touches inside the 10-yard line last week in the win over Bangor, and he got a touchdown on that uh, drive as well. Second down and seven. Shewitt comes in motion again. And they hand it off, and this is Carter Butt. Breaks it into the secondary, spins, and it gets it inside the 20. It's going to be enough for a first down. He got it down to about the 18. And 
that should likely, I would assume, probably end the quarter. And if it, there's 12 seconds left, they'll reset the chains if they want to run another play. And it looks like they're just going to let it run. Actually, it's stopped while they move the chains here. Edgar's going to just walk to the sideline. I think it's going to be a penalty. It's going to be declined. A penalty against Blackhawk Warren that's going to be declined here. I just want to see what they're, what the, actually what they're going to call. So Edgar's going to have to run another play here. Actually, no, they're going to start the clock now, yep. and they're, and they're going to let it run out, I would imagine. Yeah, and they will. Even, yeah, and they're on a chance. So we've played three. And uh, the Edgar Wildcats are in position now to uh, win this football game with one quarter left. They lead it 29-6, to six, and they have the ball inside the red zone. When we come back, you're watching and you're listening to High, high School Championship Football on Zaleski Sports. Greg's Groot's Appliance is the place for all your home appliance needs. Let owners Greg and Tammy Kornack, along with their staff, provide you with quality appliances. Greg's Gruet's Appliance offers professional delivery, installation, and our own service department. Located in Merrill and proudly serving all of central Wisconsin. Greg's Gruet's Appliance. Service with Wildcat pride. At the Granite Shop, we take great pride in what we do. We offer high quality natural stone granite as well as a huge selection of man-made stone. With full slabs as well as a variety of partial remnants, you'll have no problem finding the stone that was meant for you. Our high-end, high-quality granite, quartz, and marble is perfect for any kitchen, bathroom, or remodel need. We are locally owned and operated on County Road C near Stratford. We service all of Wisconsin. Fleet Farm has everything you need for every season of life. From tending the vegetable garden season, to planting 100 acres of crop season. Fleet Farm is your one-stop shop. Whether it's strawberry jam season, cook your walleye season, or his first set of wheels season. Fleet Farm is built for every season. Fleet Farm, built for real life. Tom King, Mike Wenlet back here at Camp Randall where the Edgar Wildcats are 12 minutes away from a Division 7 championship here. They lead it 29-6 to and have the football inside the Blackhawk Warren 20-yard line. Quick shout-out as well to Ken Sch Schiller Schuler, an Edgar alumni, 1966 football, the first conference champ in program history watching back home. So again, for those of you who couldn't make it, glad you're listening along with us as it's been quite the day for the Wildcats. And we'll see what uh, the fourth quarter will bring us here as Carter Butt has a chance to set some records. He's already tied the Division 7 touchdown record with four today. And with another one would tie the all-division touchdown record, which is five. Uh, a quick shout-out as well, getting reminders over. We will have uh, video highlights coming up later tonight of this game on our Facebook pages. Our game brought to you in part today by Culligan Water. Get Culligan Water for only $9.95 a month for the first three months. Visit Sterling Culligan Water at CulliganH2O.com. And also Nikolai Bank, offering personal banking at its best. They have locations in Stevens Point, Wausau, Colby, Medford, Edgar, and Merrill. You can learn more at NikolaiBank.com. Edgar comes to the line, first and 10 at the 18-yard line. Tegan Stride under center. Weisenberger and Butt in the backfield. Shewitt in motion. They give it to Weisenberger. Cuts it back and gets it down inside the 15. Moving the pile down inside the 10. He got some help. Shewitt was pushing the pile. Baumgarter was in there as well. And Col Schnelly too. Colby Weisenberger takes it down inside the 10. They're going to mark it uh, at about the 9-yard line. It's going to be first and goal for the Wildcats from there. They marked him a half a yard short. Wow, okay. I guess that's right. Second down and very short. Second down and less than a yard, it looks like. The Carter Butts stats right now, 17 carries, 165 yards, four scores. And and not seven years ago. Affelbeck and Butt in the backfield this time. Shewitt split to the near side. Straight under center. They give it to Affelbeck, and he has stood up at about the five-yard line. It's going to be enough for a first down. It'll be first and goal just shy of the five-yard line. A couple other shouts out as well. Uh, Mr. Schuler listening from Weems, Virginia, but also Brent Schutte, 2016 state champs listening from work. 
You mean people are actually working in Edgar today? Sometimes they don't have a choice. They didn't close every business in Edgar. I mean, we're working. <laughs> All right. It's going to be first and goal for the Wildcats at the six-yard line. Looking at the crowd over there, it appears that a big chunk of uh, the city of Edgar is here today. And we had the band here earlier. Butt and Affleck in the backfield. Shewitt comes in motion again. It's Carter Butt. And he has stood up and dropped at the five-yard line. So that time, there was no hole for Carter Butt, and uh, two or three gray jerseys brought him down at the five, second and goal from there. Another update from our, our chat watching the game. A lot, a lot of the sportsmanship. Uh, Dylan Ella, Boyceville alumni, cheering for the Wildcats. Of course, we had a lot of Boyceville fans watching our coverage a couple of weeks ago. If you're going to, if you're going to uh, lose to someone, you want that team to go on and win the title, right? Exactly. It's like playing the Brewers in the playoffs. It's, it's like you're guaranteed to go to the title. <laughs> that's that's what, what's been happening, isn't it? Every year since 1981. Second down and goal from the four for the Wildcats. Butt and Affleck in the backfield. They give it to Butt again. He's got a hole. Powering he's, through. He's into is. the end zone. Touchdown. He got stood up at the two-yard line, but it wasn't enough to slow him down. He was able to power into the end zone for his fifth touchdown of the day. A huge hug from Baumgartner. And that will tie the all-division record for touchdowns in a championship game, his fifth of the day for Carter Butt. And set the Division Seven record for Carter Butt. What a, what a day. What a couple of weeks for this guy. As he was, he was basically hold, holding like a Statue of Liberty spinning across the goal line. When you watch it back on, on the video board here at Camp Randall or Barry, Barry Alvarez Field. 35 to 6 the score, and it uh, looks like they're going to try to kick the extra point here. And now you're, you're one, one touchdown away. Something tells me he'll get another chance. No, I think he's done. Oh, keep feeding him. Give him. Harrison Gravine will try to kick this extra point. He's got record hugs, yeah. So Gravine to kick in. So we'll see in next possession or even on defense if Carter Buck comes back out. Or at least give him his moment to come off the field Snap by himself. Snap is good. The Sorry. kick is up, and the kick is good. And it's 36-6. to six. We'll take a break and come back with more. You're listening to High School Championship Football on Zaleski Sports. Learning Garden with two convenient central Wisconsin locations. Here's Brooke Severs to tell us about it. Little Sprouts has been around for almost seven years here in Auburndale. In Rudolph, we've been open for about two and a half. We serve here in Auburndale. We have six weeks old up until 12 year olds. And then in Rudolph, we have one year olds up until 12 year olds. The biggest thing that we do with them is we have play-based learning so that they um, learn through play with each other. And social skills are a huge part of what we do with them. Find Little Sprouts Learning Garden on Facebook Facebook today. From humble beginnings in 1904, the Wietrich family has grown grassland dairy products into one of the largest processors of butter in the nation. Based in Greenwood, Wisconsin, the family and its hundreds of employees continue their pursuit of providing high quality products that can proudly be served in restaurants and homes across America. Winter's coming fast, which means it's time to hit the trails. Bill's Service Center has all things you need to stay warm and dry on the trails this winter. With a full selection of jackets, bibs, helmets, boots, casual wear. And don't forget that Bill's is your chainsaw safety gear headquarters. Bill's Service Center is your one-stop connection for all your cold weather riding gear. Don't freeze your jingle bells off. Get your cold weather riding gear at Bill's Service Center. Bill's Service Center, where the adventure begins. And we're back here at Barry Alvarez Field, Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Division 7 championship game. The first of four games today, and uh, the Edgar Wildcats are in a pretty good spot right now. They lead it 36-6 to with 9.52 to play in regulation. Carter Butt, as we mentioned, five touchdowns that breaks the Division 7 touchdown record in a title game and ties the all-division record in a title game as well. As so, you know, a quick shout as well to Todd watching or listening and watching from Green Bay, uh, saying, especially you, Tom, awesome job all season. As I know a lot of Edgar fans have been singing your praises it's, the last couple of seasons. It's been a blast, I'll tell you what. This has been a fun team to watch, a fun team to call. 
Um, and uh, it's not just you know it's not just winning every week. I mean, obviously, winning is, as I said is more fun than losing. But it's just been a fun team to watch. There's so many talented players on this team. Absolutely. I mean, Nuke Lelouch Luke, 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 Luke was right. Winning is way better than losing. <laughs> but but yeah, yeah, you're right. This is a, a phenomenal group of, of young men. It was fun covering them a couple years ago when they went to Satan basketball, uh, doing play by play in that game. It was it was. You, you can tell how much the town cares and the families and the coaches care about these kids. Harrison Gravine to kick off. And it's a squibber down the middle of the field. Going to be picked up on the runner at about the 30-yard line. Cross the 35 and then run down at about the 39-yard line. In on the stop for the Wildcats that time, Will Hackle and Gavin Maurer, a couple looking, of the underclassmen. Looking to see who's coming out. Looks like a starting defense is still out there. Let's see if they'll start thinking about giving their seniors each one of them their moment to head off one by one. So Blackhawk Warren with the f football first and 10 from their own 38-yard line. The fullest of full house backfields. Quick hit hitter right up the middle and a positive yardage out across the 40. Looking, looks like Sefrud again. Carter Butt on the stop. Got it out to about the 44. Pickup of about six, maybe five. Call it second down and five. And Carter Butt now uh, 13 tackles on the day as well with nine and a half to go in the fourth. And surprisingly, not a single tackle for loss by Edgar today. Warriors come to the line. Taking a lot of time to get to the line. I think they're kind of a demoralized squad at this point with 9.03 to play. Man in motion. Going to try the option this time. They pitch it out. They've got some running room. Trying to get the corner out of bounds. It's going to be short of the first down. Ma Maverick Butt driving the running back out of bounds. There's Marty and Brady Steets, the big alignment with the block. 6'2", 237, blocking a corner. When you're a defensive back, you see that, and you're like, uh-oh. He talked about getting some of the seniors in. Ethan Telshaw, a senior linebacker coming into the game for the Wildcats. Yeah, give, give, give all these, especially these seniors who may not play all the time, but give them their moment on Camp Randall. Moment you're never going to forget. First and 10 for the Warriors and bringing it out across midfield into Edgar territory at about the 46-yard line. Looks like another sub coming in, though, very quickly. And... Carter, but leaves the field. Kale Higgins coming into the game at linebacker now. So we'll see, and he's, we'll see if that's the final time he touches the field. Yeah, it might wearing be. Wearing the green and white. Uh, a couple updates as well from Brandon Ashenbrenner, congratulating Edgar and enjoying you, your, your commentary versus the TV announcers and saying it'll be Stratford's turn next. And Rachel Zaleski uh, saying it's been a pleasure producing games with you, Tom. And Jeremy Jones, congratulations to Edgar and to assistant coach Johnny P. They try a counter play this time, and are going to pick up first down yardage down inside the 40. So Blackhawk Warren moving the football on this drive. A couple of first downs. Another couple of subs coming in. Who's heading out? Mason Thornton. Austin Jacobs coming in for the Wildcats. It's like Stonky is heading out, and Telshow. Tell yeah, Lucas Stonky heading to the sideline. His day is done. He's still got a couple of years left, though. Yeah, just a sophomore. That's why they brought out a second guy with him. He's give the seniors one by one. First and ten for the Warriors. Play action. They're going to roll out right. Schleem wants to throw. He's got a man. It's caught. First down just inside the 25-yard line. Defender was just a split second late getting there. That was Affelbeck. And it's going to be another first down for the Warriors at the 24. Actually, right at the 25 is where they'll mark it. So moving a little bit here. Sefru is up to 81 yards rushing. Looks like Carter Butts back on the field. So his day wasn't done. Just giving him, giving him, giving him a little, uh, <laughs> little water break. First and 10. They want to keep him out of the end zone here yep. is what they want here. They're going to put some of the starters back in. They're going to try the option again this time. Pitch it right, trying to get the corner, and uh, won't get there. Good open field tackle again. Maverick Butt on the tackle. And we've seen that a few times today now with Marty. He's just not being patient. He's not trying to set up his blocker who's, again, got a good half a foot and 
65 pounds on the corner, and Marty just goes outside in the corner and goes, well, cool, I'm not going to be blocked. We mentioned earlier in the game that you know, the beginning of the season, Tucker Strite and Maverick Butt, the two sophomores, starting in the defensive backfield for the Wildcats. And that was a question early as to whether or not they would be able to perform at a high enough level at the varsity level, and they certainly have. And especially here late in the season, here's another handoff, going to be short of the first down, down inside the 20 to about the 18. Yes, Sefrud with another carry for seven with 6.45 to go in counting. So it's third down and about three, maybe four. Four, no, three, call it three. And again, a solid day for Seth Rude, the junior, 15 carries, 88 yards, but again, it just pales in comparison to his counterpart on the other side. Reverse the numbers and add five touchdowns. Quick hitter inside, positive yardage down inside the 15. This time it's going to be enough. Well, they push him back. Let's see, they're going to give him a first down. It's marked inside the 15 at about the 14-yard line. Our game brought to you in part today by the Buccaneer of Roselleville, ready to welcome you to Supper Club Life. The Buccaneer has nightly specials, including Fish Fry Friday and Prime Rib Saturday. Visit the Buccaneer and enjoy the area's best fresh salad bar, a large drink menu, and tasty desserts. And veterans and first responders, you qualify to get a discount as well at the Buccaneer in Roselleville. No better place on opening hunting weekend to go to the Buccaneer. Schleem under center. Man comes in motion. He wants to throw. Straight drop. He throws it down the middle of the field. Intercepted. Carter Butt with the pick. How about putting a maraschino oh, cherry on top? Now he pitches it out to strike. Tucker Strike down the far sideline. And he goes out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. That was a because-I-can play by Carter Butt. Have, I mean, it's you, are you, are you going to see a better <laughs> state performance on both sides of the ball? Well, there probably have been. You know, we have recency bias here, but I'll tell you I what. Mean, five touchdowns, a pick, 15 tackles. Yeah, yeah it's it's an incredible maraschino cherry on top of his high or, school football how, Sunday. No or, question how about, about a, it. how about just a month of November? Indeed. Six touchdowns yeah. two weeks ago. You yeah. had a couple last week or one last week. High five in the way to the end zone. So it's a first down for Edgar at the 30-yard line. And I, I wish I could. I wish we were closer. I could see just how wide Tucker Strite's eyes were when he saw the <laughs> ball coming his way. He's like, don't drop it, don't drop it, don't drop it. Now, we probably wouldn't be saying that if there was a fumble on that pitch. But, uh, yeah, you've got to give the senior credit for having confidence in his sophomore teammate to give him the football in that situation. 5.56 to play here in regulation. Uh, Warriors, Wildcats lead it 36-6. to And they have the football first and 10 on their own 30-yard line. Yeah, I'm sure, and I'm sure they're. I mean, they know what's on the way. You, Are, can, you can, we can hear the fan base from across the field. Yeah, they're ready to explode down onto the field. I would imagine. Bame Insurance, one of our great sponsors. Football today, sponsored by Bame Insurance of Edgar, founded in 1938. They're an insurance agency, a third-generation, family-run, independent agency. Get the personalized customer service you deserve at Bame Insurance of Edgar. Bame Insurance in downtown Edgar. And we'll see. It looks like some of the starting off offense out there. I think I saw Bumgartner. We'll see who will fish, who all comes out. Looks like Fletcher Weiland's still going to be out there, so the offensive line, Ty Schnelli's going to be out there. So they're going to keep the uh, keep the seniors. Uh, well, Ty Schnelli's a junior, but Weiland, Weiland's only a junior as well. I, I was surprised, but I thought he was a senior. Well, oh, oh, I mean, it's only six minutes left, but another score, it's a running clock. Which I'm not sure I've seen. Well, I mean, last year's D7 game was a running clock as well with Regis when over Shyock. When you look at the seniors for this Edgar Wildcat team, you're talking about quarterback and safety, Tegan Strite. You're talking, obviously, about Carter Butt, who starts at middle linebacker and running back. You're talking about Corey Schilling, one of the linemen. Brett Baumgartner, the tight end linebacker. Preston Dahlke is a senior. Cale Higgins, Marcus Hainerfus up front. Ethan Telshill, Colby Schwarer. Also, a uh, oh, Colby Schwartz, a junior, excuse me, and uh, the other seniors, Mason Thornton, Harrison Gravine, and Austin and, Jacobs. And also Colby Wein Weisenberger. And, yeah, I missed, I missed him, yes, Colby Weisenberger. So a lot of the skill positions will be uh, new next year for the Wildcats, and, boy, do they have something to live up to here if you're and going to keep the, uh, you know, the... And I remember covering a few years ago in that abbreviated playoffs of 2021, whatever year that was, and... They talked about how great that Edgar team was, and these guys were these guys were sophomores. And you know, freshmen? eventually, eventually, the Jerry Sins era is going to come to an an end. He's been there forty nine years. Next year would be number fifty. Um, you know, going out on a championship would certainly be a way to do it. But I can't believe that he wouldn't want to come back and keep it going. He he seems like he's having just as much fun as he did. 
20, 30 years ago. It only be number eight. He wants double digits. So it's first and 10 for the Wildcats here at the 30-yard line. Offset backfield. Strike taking all the time he can. Now it's going to be an illegal procedure penalty. Yes, I think that's the flinching. first penalty against Edgar today. I think Leighton Shue had moved out there on the uh, on the end. And, yeah, starting off in there, including Carter Butt in the backfield. I mean, he is. They're going to ride it out. They're going to let the seniors starters finish well, finish I, the championship well, on the field. Take another penalty. Go back to 20. He's 80 yards away from the record. First and 15 now for the Wildcats. You think they know that on the sideline? Probably not, but, but Trevor might. Offset backfield. They give it to Weisenberger. Weisenberger up the middle. He gets it back near the original line of scrimmage, a pickup of about five. And now they're going to sub out, it looks Here like. Come the Segan seniors. Strites coming out. Carter, Carter Butts, Butts out. coming out. Weisenberger's coming out. Affleback. He's, I mean, he's only a junior, but Preston Dahlke. Preston Dahlke's coming out. So the, All uh, of them. the seniors are walking off, and the crowd giving them a standing ovation on their feet. As they should be. What What a... Run by this team. And a reminder as well, don't forget, uh, we will have highlights from the Wildcat State Championship coming later on this afternoon on our Facebook pages. And the handoff this time to Mauer. Brock Mauer takes the handoff, gets around the end, and gets it out to about the 35-yard line. So it's going to be third medium. Third down at about five now for the Wildcats. So Carter Butt's going to end his day. 19 attempts, 171 yards, five touchdowns. Again, a Division Seven record for rushing touchdowns, and he tied the all-division record for and rushing touchdowns in a state championship game. Don't forget an interception as well. An interception. And I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to check out his, his full defensive stats. Third down. It's going to be third down at about six. They marked him back at about the 34-yard line, so that's where Edgar will run this play. Third and six. They're taking as much time as they can. And Tucker straight, the quarterback, hands it off, and uh, the running back going nowhere. That's Will Hackle, who got dumped in the backfield. And it's going to be a fourth down, a punting situation for Edgar. You haven't seen this very often. And also uh, Carter Butt officially as the 4-10 and counting here. And also defensively, Carter Butt 13 tackles, 8 solo to go along with an interception. Leading the way by more than everyone else on both sides. Yeah, they've got the uh, they've got the regular punt team out here. I would imagine that the, the you know the backup punt team hasn't practiced very much, so you got to put. I mean, how much has the starting punt team practiced? You've got you've got to you've put them out there because the other the reserves probably don't even know how to run it at this well, point. Well, your quarterback's a gunner. So Brock Maurer was standing at his own twenty yard line to punt this one away, <laughs> and now we're going to get a penalty. Delay it's going to be a delay of game penalty against Edgar here. Three thirty three exactly to go. We also want to thank our longtime sponsor this season, normally of the postgame show, Nasonville Dairy. There won't be a traditional postgame show today. We'll do some highlights or some uh, uh, stats and a scoring summary up here in the booth, and that'll wrap things up as we will get ready for our second game of the day. Jason Zaleski, Dan Ross will bring you Stratford taking on Darlington for the Division Six title. That game scheduled to start around 1 o'clock. Here's the snap, and the punt's away. It's a spiraled punt, going to... Bounce at about the 45-yard line of Blackhawk Warren, and that's where it rolls dead at about the 44. So with 3.22 to play in regulation, the Warriors get the football back. And again for Edgar, the 14th state appearance and all, uh, the, all, the state record broke the tie with Arrowhead and St. Mary Springs. Darlington right behind as well with... With their 13th. Some of the starters still out there on defense. Colby Weisenberger still out there. Brett Baumgartner out there. Tegan Strite is out there. And Carter Butt back in on defense as well. So they're going to let the defense finish it up and try to keep Blackhawk Warren out of the end zone here to finish this game. We'll see if they try and throw it anymore or if they're just going to run, run it out themselves. First and 10 Warriors. And they're going to hand it off. Quick hitter. Positive yardage. Baumgartner drops it down. The ball was loose, but they're going to blow it dead. And here comes some more. Now they're going to sub in six six reserves come in so from the, the sideline for the, the Wildcats. So the seniors have now gotten three separate moments. <laughs> strike going off. Tucker strike. Both strikes going off. Harrison Gravine going off. Baumgartner Schuett going off. Baumgartner Weisenberger. So the subs are in. I, I think I, I think I think there's one guy who's going to come off by himself. I think probably next play. Who's still out there right now in Carter Butt. 
Second down and five. They're handing off try the left side. They've got a hole for a moment. It closed quickly and making the stop. Preston Dalkey, another senior, yep, one, will probably one sub head off in. as well. Carter Butt's going to head off. Now he will. He's and yeah, he's going to be Mason Thornton's going to head off. And also Jace Affelbeck's day is done. Dalkey's still out there. Maverick Butt heading off as well. And giving these some Dom of these, Contreras, a sophomore defensive back in the game. And giving some of these young guys. They can say they've played at Barry Alvarez Field. Sawyer Reef out there as well. Inside handoff, positive yardage, first down yardage for the Warriors into Edgar territory at about the 40-yard line. And interesting to see there as well. Good to see still fighting hard. Griffin Comprude, a uh, junior to I mean, still finishing his block with the final two minutes on the way. Senior Ethan Telshow back out there for Edgar. Yeah, so him and Dalkey still, still out there. Lucas Stocky heading off the field. Mason Thornton in, in that defensive line for the Wildcats. Minute 50 to go in counting. Hand off. They try the right side this time. A little running room. And running, the, running back down from behind, coming over to make the stop. Sawyer Reef, the senior. Second down. And Dalkey heads off. And five. Yeah, Preston Dalkey had a great senior year on defense. And another big ovation. From the final 90, final 80 seconds of the Division 7 state championship. Preston Dalkey was honorable mention all uh, state defensive line spot. They hand it off. Breaking tackles now. And then finally being wrapped up and dropped. Cale Higgins making the stop that time, but it's going to be enough for a first down for the Warriors. They get it down inside the 30 to about the 33, and they're going to take a timeout, I believe. I think they stopped it to move the chains. No, I think I think uh, Blackhawk Warren took a timeout. Okay. We'll keep it right here. And also, uh, again, a shout-out as well. This is the final, at least for now, the final ever game for the Merrillwood Conference. And it's going to be quite the ending for one of the greatest conferences this state has ever seen. Indeed, and uh, for head coach Jerry Sins, just a spectacular career. Keeps on rolling. 14th trip to state. That's a record for any school in the state of Wisconsin, and it's going to be the eighth title for the Edgar Wildcats in the Jerry Sins era. They won the Division Seven title in 2016. They took the Division Six crown back in 2009 and 2010, and they won a Division Five title in 92, 99, and 2001, and they will win a Division Seven title here today leading 36-6 with just a minute six remaining. So, again, he's won, now. He's, he's won in five different decades. <laughs> Going back. Well, it is, it, you know, any career at, at the high school level of 49 years is incredible on its face, but especially these days, to uh, have a, uh, a coach last that long. I'd hate to be the guy that's going to replace him someday. First and 10 for the Warriors. Inside handoff and some positive yardage down inside the 25 to about the 23. You never know. One of the, maybe his uh, successors are playing on the field right now. Number 21, you know, number 8. I got asked a lot this, this season if Carter Budd was going to play college football somewhere, and I always forgot to ask him when I saw him down on the field. But uh, from what I understand, uncommitted at this point, you got to believe if he wants to play at the next level, he could, and uh, I hope he gets the chance. I don't care. I don't care what level it is. I hope he gets the chance to play somewhere because he's fun to watch, and no doubt. I think and they one just running play up the middle, and that's going to probably do it here. I think they just got the Gatorade bath too to Coach Sins. Well, at least it's a warm day. Yes. I saw Coach Sins was talking in that pregame interview about uh, the year that they couldn't <laughs> practice outside for a week and a half because it was too cold. Certainly not today. Beautiful day yeah. here at Camp Randall. Uh, Camp Randall, beautiful day to win a championship, no doubt. See, I got uh, Gatorade bath a couple weeks ago, and it wasn't fun in 32-degree weather. <laughs> it Warriors will line up to run another play here, probably the final play of the game. Yeah, so this will do it. 
if they even want to run and it. And now we have movement. They're going to let it play on. They're not even going to throw the flag. There was movement in the line, but they let the play run, and that's going to do it. And the Edgar sideline begins to celebrate the Edgar fans on their feet as the Wildcats will win the Division Seven championship here today with a victory 36-6 to over Blackhawk Warren. We'll come back, recap the scoring, get the stats, and do all of that next. You're watching and listening to High School Championship Football. Anza let Winter's coming fast, which means it's time to hit the trails. Bill Service Center has all things you need to stay warm and dry on the trails this winter. With a full selection of jackets, bibs, helmets, boots, casual wear. And don't forget that Bill's is your chainsaw safety gear headquarters. Bill's Service Center is your one-stop connection for all your cold weather riding gear. Don't freeze your jingle bells off. Get your cold weather riding gear at Bill's Service Center. Bill's Service Center, where the adventure begins. Who are we? We are a locally owned and operated business serving our community for over 60 years. We have expanded to three locations with over 1 million square feet of combined production space. We have an elite workforce of over 400 employees. We have built stadiums for the Vegas Raiders, Indianapolis Colts, Atlanta Falcons, Chicago Bears, Minnesota Vikings, and more. Who are we? There's only one answer. You're tuned in to Better Halves. Mike, what are you looking for? Skip, I'm not getting older, I'm getting better. I still got big plans for my life and my Medicare. I know exactly what you want from Medicare. Same as all the other guys, me. <laughs> hey Mike, I'm Sheila from Security and I'm just like you. In fact, I'm from your neighborhood and I've got a Medicare plan that treats you like you. Did it just get better in here? King Mike Wenlet as the Edgar Wildcats getting set to in celebrate their Division 7 championship, a 36-6 victory over Blackhawk Warren here today. Quickly recapping the scoring, Carter Butt with five touchdowns on the day, a 42-yard run on Edgar's first possession. Colby Weisenberger scored a two-point conversion, but then took it in from four yards out. The only touchdown for Blackhawk Warren late in the first half, a five-yard pass to um, Marty. And the two-point conversion attempt was no good. Then in the second half, it was all Carter Butt. 29-yard touchdown run with uh, Tegan Strite picking up a two-point conversion, 22-6. to Butt then brought it in from 20 yards out. Gravine kicked the extra point, 29-6. And then Carter Butt, a four-yard touchdown run. And your final score here, 36-6. to What do you have for stats? What the what? Quite the dichotomy here. Tegan Strite, one of three passing. Only took three attempts, three yards, and an interception. Really should have been just two. Carter Carter Butt, though, 19 carries, 171 yards, five touchdowns, the Division 7 record, and tied the all-division record. Tegan Schreit, five carries, 44. Weisenberger, 9 for 19. Affelbeck, 4 for 15. For Blackhawk Warren, quickly. Schleem, 4 of 7, 27 yards, a touchdown, two interceptions. Seth Rood, 17 carries, 96 yards, 18 for a 65 for Marty. And then very quickly, defensively, Carter Butt, 15 tackles, 10 solo, and an interception. Baumgartner, 10 tackles. Weisenberger, with nine as the they're getting ready to give out the balls the silver ball has been given out right now yeah blackhawk warren takes home the silver ball hey nothing uh, nothing really bad about bringing home a, a silver ball uh but the edgar wildcats will get the gold ball here and win it 36 to 6 we're going to wrap things up here get you set for our second game it's going to be uh, jason zaleski dan ross on the call as stratford will go for the division six title taking on darlington thanks for listening and congratulations to the edgar wildcat division seven champions they win it 36 to 6 i'm tom king and you've been watching championship football on zaleski sports Thank you.